So welcome back. This is lecture five of income from salaries. So the next lecture will be our last lecture, lecture six. Okay. So and this is for CMA Intermediate December 2022 attempt assessment year 2022-23 Finance Act 2021. So now we have to start from perquisites. Okay. This is basically the last section, okay, but a long section. Right. So first of all. What is perquisites? Okay, it's all benefits or amenities provided by the employer in addition to salaries and wages. Okay, in cash or in kind. So difference with kind which are convertible into money. Okay, in cash or kind which are convertible into money. Okay, so provided either voluntarily or under a service contract. Now. Uh, so there are three main things you can say. One is your basic element, okay, which is your basic salary, okay, fees, okay, bonus, okay, these are the main things, okay, and then you have got something called allowances, which is also monetary, but you are given to given. So that you can take care of some specific expense. Okay. So that is allowance. Okay. Apart from that, now apart from your salary and allowance, you get, if you are getting some benefits. Okay. So these, these benefits are mostly in kind. So we are not saying that it will always be in kind, but mostly in kind. They are called as perquisites. Okay, so basically all benefits and amenities provided by employer in addition to salaries or wages, either in cash or in kind. Okay, if it is kind, it should be convertible into money. Otherwise, it won't be called as perquisites. So three types are there. Okay, so three types are there. So one is tax-free perquisites. Okay, so these are as the name suggests, suggests there is no tax on it. It is tax-free. Okay, second is taxable perquisites. Okay, and third is taxable under specified cases. Okay, so there is a definition of specified employee. So we'll see that. Okay, so the point C is taxable only for specified employees. Right? These three types of perquisites are there. Now, perquisites as per Income Tax Act, okay, Section 17.2, it gives an inclusive definition of perquisites. What are, what are the things which are perquisites? Okay, but it's not exhaustive. There can be more than this also. Okay, that's why uh, you say Perquisite includes, okay. So one is value of rent-free accommodation provided by the employer, right? If your employer has provided with you with a rent-free or concessional accommodation, okay. If it's provided you with rent-free or concessional accommodation, right, it will be a perquisite for you, right? Next is, third one is, Value of any benefit or amenity provided free of cost or at concessional rate to specified employees. So this will be chargeable to tax only for specified employees. Okay. So what are the things which will be, which will be chargeable to tax only for specified employees? We'll be seeing as and now we go ahead in various things. We will see that certain things will be taxable only to specified employees. And then at the end of the session, we'll be able to collect it all. So we'll have a list of everything which is taxable to specified employees, okay? Next is employees obligation paid by employer. This is taxable on cash basis, okay? On payment basis that is, right? So for example, we see here employer paid employees professional tax liability for 2020-21. 
okay in april 2021 okay so because he has paid in april 2021 and it is taxable on what cash basis so it is taxable for previous year 21 22 okay when it is paid basically so employees obligation paid by employer next is some payable for life insurance or annuity scheme annuity is like pension right what you, what you get every year okay so some payable by employer for life insurance or annuity it is taxable on accrual basis okay everything is taxable on accrual basis unless otherwise specified okay so whenever it is specified as cash basis like it is specified here only then it is taxable on cash basis if not specified as it is you can assume that it is accrual basis only okay so this is some payable by employer for life insurance or annuity of an employee okay so this just excludes some paid for RPF, approved superannuation fund or deposit link insurance fund. So it doesn't talk about this. It is talking about life insurance and annuity. Okay. So we are seeing what, what are perquisites. Okay. Perquisites is benefit or amenity uh, given by the employer. Normally it is, it is kind, in kind. Okay. But it can also be in cash. Okay. So perquisites will always be anything which is other than your basic salary and your bonus, commission, fees, okay, and your allowances. It will always be other than that, okay. Right. So what are taxable uh, under perquisites? Main thing we have seen so far is we have an inclusive definition of perquisite. Perquisite includes one is rent-free accommodation provided by employer if he is providing concession for rent then also it is perquisite okay then any benefit or amenity free of cost concessional rate provided to specified employees we have a definition of specified employees we will see that a little later okay so this point we will be examining later okay and then employees obligation paid by employer for example employer paid employees professional tax liability for 2020 2021 okay but paid in 2021 2022 okay so it, this is taxable on cash basis okay so which is why it will be taxable in previous year 2021 22 right then these are the four points and fifth one is some payable by employer for life insurance or annuity scheme of employee and it is taxable on accrual basis as i said you don't even need to say that it is taxable on accrual basis. Anything not specified as cash, by default, it is accrual basis. The value of any specified security or sweat equity shares di allotted directly or indirectly by the employer or former employer free of cost or at concessional rate. Okay. So sometimes... Uh, employers will allot you some specified securities or sweat equity shares. So sweat equity shares is normally given to directors, okay? Directors or some higher level employees. Okay. For providing okay, know-how. So if they have found out any new way of working which is beneficial to the uh, employer know-how or patent they are providing any of these okay then they are given shares called as sweat equity shares okay although the name sweat is there okay basically implies hard work done by them okay but by seeing sweat you might see its lower level employees okay so it's not that sweat equity shares is for higher level employees. But employee stock option scheme, ESOP, that is basically for everyone. Okay. So the value of such shares given free or at concessional rate, that is an advantage to you, right? If the shares, the shares market value now is say thousand rupees per share. 
and the employer is given giving you for 200 and you have an advantage of 800 correct so this 800 is your perquisite okay not the entire thousand now next is contribution made to the account of the SSE by the employer okay in recognized provident fund NPS, okay, National Pension Scheme, in RPF, NPS, and in an approved superannuation plan. Okay, so total contribution by employer in all these three, total contribution in all these three, okay, if it exceeds 7,50,000 in a previous year. Okay, so if total contribution exceeds 7,50,000, combined limit of all, all three, that extra amount will be perquisite. Okay. The next is your annual accretion, interest, dividend, etc. during the previous year. Okay. So the balance of these funds, your RPF, NPS, whatever, you know, basically anything which is increasing interest uh, by way of interest, right? For RPF, you know that till uh, for RPF, employee salary up to 12%, okay, and interest up to 9.5% is exempt, correct? So if it goes over this, interest goes over this, it will be taxable as perquisite, okay? Then, last one is the value of any fringe benefit or amenity as may be prescribed. So we will see some fringe benefits or amenities, some additional fringe means not major ones, uh, additional benefits or amenities, and we'll see how that will be taxed as perquisite. Okay. Now, next point is perquisites are taxable only if allowed by an employer to his employee or member of his household. Okay. So allowed by an employer to employee or member of his household right and results in nature of personal advantage there should be some advantage okay and third is derived by virtue of employee's authority okay which means that because he is the employee of that employer which is why he has got this it should be there now here uh, Allowed by an employer to an employee, okay, and then resulting in nature of personal advantage. Now, for example, just take an example, take an example of, uh, there is a gardener, let us, okay. Okay, employer has a gardener. Now he has one bungalow, which is vacant. Okay, bungalow is vacant. So he has asked the gardener to stay there for some time, okay, till it is vacant. So he can take care of that also, right, and stay there, right. So now the rent of the rent of the bungalow is let us say fifty thousand per month that way, okay. So is it fair if we say that fifty thousand is perquisite to the gardener and take it from him? No, correct. So, which is why that point is there, which says should result in personal advantage. Okay. Now, this is not a personal advantage because it's beyond his means. It's beyond the means of the gardener. Okay. So, which is why it will not be treated as personal advantage. Hence, even if he's staying here, it won't be considered as a perquisite. Okay, so right. So, perquisites are taxable only if these three things are uh, fulfilled. Okay, any one is not fulfilled, it will not be taxable. It can be contractual or voluntary. Okay, so in salary, there are most of the things contractual or voluntary. Everything is taxable. Okay, if you are getting it because you are the employee. Received from former, present, and prospective employer. Okay. 
prospect to his future employer, right? So now we said, uh, in the beginning, we said given to employee or member of his household, correct? Given to employee or member of his household. Was this point somewhere, right? Yeah, here, yeah, this one. Okay, this one. Allowed to an employer to his employer, member of his household. So now we need to know what is member of his household, okay? How to define it. That's what we are seeing now. Member of household includes spouse, whether dependent or not, parents, whether dependent or not, servants also come under your member of household, children, your children and their spouse, whether dependent or not. Okay? Spouse is yani, husband, ke liye, wife, spouse, mane jayegi, wife, ke liye, husband, spouse. Spouse is a common word. And any anyone who is dependent on you. This is your member of your household. Okay, this is how it is defined. Right. So, and then uh, what is the meaning of specified employees, right? We have, we have discussed quite a bit about specified employees and even here when we started this, taxable under specified cases. There are three types of perquisite we said. One is tax-free, second is taxable, okay? And third is taxable under specified cases. This was for specified employees okay so we need to know what is a specified employee okay so one a director employee okay if you are a director so it is immaterial whether you know you are a full-time part-time director nominee director whatever but you are a director right if you're a director then you will become a director employee okay so if you are if you are a director, whether full time, part time, whether a nominee director, okay, whatever, whatever kind of director, independent director, any director, okay. So basically, here the director is any director, okay, any kind of director, is a specified employee. So specified employee means one is a director employee. Remember, director is specified employee for that company only. So he can, he will be direct, uh, let's say he is working in three or four companies, but is director only in one company. So he'll be director in that company only, not in the other company. So if you see an example, Manu is working with X limited as director employee and with Y limited as normal employee. So he's specified employee only for X limited. Okay. And director even for a day is specified employee. In your previous year, if you have been employed director even for one day, then you become specified employee. Okay. So this is about director employee. Next is employee who has substantial interest in the employer company. Employee who has substantial interest in the employer company. Right. So what is substantial interest? He beneficially holds. 20% or more voting power in employer company. Okay, if he's holding 20% or more voting power in the employer company. Okay, so beneficially means he should be able to exercise it whenever required, right? So basically now in the depository system, whenever your shares are held in the depository system, the registered owner is the depository and you are the beneficial owner, but you have all the rights, okay? So you have, you have the right to vote and all that. So beneficial holder means you should be able to exercise it whenever required. Okay. So employee who has substantial interest in the employer company. Substantial interest means beneficially holds 20% or more vote, voting power. Okay. Then again, like in the previous one, such employee is specified employee of that company only where you have specified where you have substantial interest. Main criteria is beneficial ownership, not legal ownership. Okay, It must be held individually, not together with a relative. Okay, So basically, 
if uh, so if you see an example here mr mohan holds 18% equity share of x limited wife holds 7% okay so now you cannot add 18 plus 7 25 okay so now mr mohan individually can only exercise 18% right tomorrow he has to vote it's not essential that his wife will listen to him always correct so what he himself can exercise is only this 18%. So for calculating, for finding out substantial interest, see what he can individually exercise. Okay. In such a case, Mohan is not a specified employee. Haan, okay. okay, Sumit. So here we have seen this. Specified employees kya hota hai, okay? ये डेफिनेशन है कुछ कैटेगरी ऑफ एम्प्लॉइज है जिनको हम स्पेसिफाइड बोलते हैं ठीक है सो so, टैक्सेशन में थोड़ा बहुत चीजों में उन, उनको टैक्स ज्यादा लगता है इसमें सबसे पहले है डायरेक्टर एम्प्लॉई ठीक है तो डायरेक्टर एम्प्लॉई में क्या रहेगा आपका वो किसी भी प्रकार का डायरेक्टर हो सकता है नॉमिनी डायरेक्टर पार्ट टाइम डायरेक्टर फुल टाइम डायरेक्टर जो भी हो इंडिपेंडेंट डायरेक्टर डायरेक्टर है ना तो स्पेसिफाइड एम्प्लॉई और जिस कंपनी का डायरेक्टर है उसी कंपनी का स्पेसिफाइड एम्प्लॉई रहेगा और, और कहीं काम कर रहा है वहां का नहीं रहेगा ओके ये हो गया वन दूसरा है एम्प्लॉई एम्प्लॉई हुआ सब्सटेंशियल इंटरेस्ट इन द कंपनी सब्सटेंशियल इंटरेस्ट मतलब आपके हाथ में 20% या और मोर वोटिंग पावर है ठीक है सब और आ, ओके सो यहां पे मेन जो है बेनिफिशियली होल्ड्स लिखा है ठीक है तो बेनिफिशियल ओनरशिप रहना चाहिए ना अगर आपको आज वोटिंग करना है तो आपके हाथ में ये 20% और मोर वोटिंग पावर 100% टाइम आपके हाथ में ही रहना चाहिए ओके ठीक है तो जैसे आपके वाइफ के पास भी कुछ है तो वो भी नहीं चलेगा यहां पे पूरा जो है ना जो शेयर्स आपके हाथ में है उसको माना जाएगा सिर्फ फॉर सब्सटेंशियल इंटरेस्ट यहां पे जिस कंपनी में आप सब्सटेंशियल इंटरेस्ट होल्ड कर रहे हो इसी कंपनी के आप स्पेसिफाइड एम्प्लॉय रहोगे और कहीं आप काम कर रहे हो वहां के नहीं ओके सो दीस टू कैटेगरीज 1 एंड 2 आर कंपनी स्पेसिफिक व्हिच एवर इन व्हिच एवर कंपनी यू हैव गॉट दिस क्राइटेरिया ओके देन यू कैन यू विल बी स्पेसिफाइड एम्प्लॉय ऑफ दैट कंपनी थर्ड वन इज डिफरेंट थर्ड वन अगर आप फुलफिल करते हो तो यू विल बी स्पेसिफाइड एम्प्लॉय ऑफ ऑल एम्प्लॉयर्स Okay, third one says if aggregate salary from all employers together exceeds 50,000 per annum. Okay, now you can see 50,000 per annum. What is the monthly? 50,000 upon 12. Correct? This much is the monthly amount. 4,166. Okay, anyone who is earning even this much per month becomes a specified employee. As such, you can say literally anyone is a specified employee. Correct? People who are earning less than this amount per month, only they are non-specified. Okay? So, your third category has really enlarged the definition of specified employee. Okay? So, if up to 50,000 per annum, if your salary is up to 50,000, then you are not a specified employee. Now, for determining the salary, 50,000, you have to exclude certain things. Okay. So, one is all non-monetary non benefits. Any perquisite you are getting, which is non-monetary, exclude that value. And there are monetary benefits which you are getting, but is exempt. It's an exempt benefit. So, non-taxable non monetary benefits excluded. Okay. Third is all deductions under salary. Three deductions are there we have seen. Exclude that also. And employer's contribution to provident fund. So these four things you have to exclude. Okay. While finding out this figure. Okay. So now when in this case, if you can see salary from two or more employers, your aggregate salary is con considered. So for example, See this example. Rohan is working with XN Company Limited and Y Limited. Two companies. Okay, two companies may come kar rahe. His taxable monetary salary from first company is 36,000. 
per annum. Second is 45,000 per annum. So you will have to add it. Adding, if you add, it is more than 50,000. Individually, both are less than 50,000. ठीक है अलग अलग देखेंगे तो दोनों 50,000 से कम है लेकिन आपको यहाँ जोड़ के देखना है सो ना ही विल बिकम स्पेसिफाइड एम्प्लॉय फॉर बोथ एम्प्लॉयर्स ठीक है सो इन लास्ट पॉइंट यू आर सीइंग मॉनेटरी लिमिट एंड इफ ही एक्सीड्स दिस मॉनेटरी लिमिट देन इट विल बी स्पेसिफाइड एम्प्लॉय फॉर ऑल एम्प्लॉयर्स ओके So these are the three points for specified employee. Okay, this is called as your specified employee. Okay, so here uh, the point here, here this is just a general one. Okay, DA not forming part of salary for retirement benefit shall be included. Okay, because it is a taxable allowance. As I said, DA forming or not forming part of salary you only use for certain other computations. But in itself, if you get DA, you are getting DA of 1 lakh. Okay. Say 60% forming part of salary for retirement benefits. Okay. This is first case. And in second case, I am saying your DA of this thing and and I will say not forming part. Okay. So now this here in the bracket whatever we have seen your forming part or not forming part whenever you will need to compute the meaning of salary for various allowances various things perquisites whatever wherever you need to compute meaning of salary and in meaning of salary you have to take only what is forming part of salary. Okay. Then you will take 60% of this. You won't take this. Okay. For computing that other thing. So, compute karna hai. Tab aap lenge 60%. Ya agar not forming part bola hai, nahi lenge. So, it is not for computing DA itself. Okay. It is for computing other things. Ab DM, DA in itself, this 1 lakh is fully taxable in all cases. Okay. DA and CCA city compensatory allowance, they are fully taxed. Okay, always. So, these are things like your um, basic salary. Okay, in allowances, uh, basic salary, bonus, fees. Okay, commission. Okay, these things are always fully taxable. ये जो चीजें हैं ये सब आपका हमेशा totally fully taxable apart from this in allowances your DA okay city compensatory allowance this will these all will be fully taxable there are more in the list okay so जैसे हमने देखा था one was your servant allowance okay servant allowance is fully taxable ठीक है there are more such allowances which are fully taxable, medical allowances, fully taxable, like that, okay? So, here, what our discussion, kis chiz pe hua tha yaha pe? Ki DA agar aya hai aapka, full amount will always be fully taxable, okay? Take it, so you don't get confused with this forming part, you know. This you will use only if you are, say, if you are computing HRA, let us say. Okay, in HRA, you have got what are the things you will use in HRA? Okay, you will see basic salary, DA if the forming part of salary and commission. So now when you want to compute HRA, where in, where in computation of HRA, wherever the word salary comes in, the meaning of that word salary, meaning of that word salary is, okay, you will take basic salary, okay, and here you will take DA if, so here, if DA 1 lakh was given, you will take only 60%, which is 60,000. Okay. So, you mean, you are computing any other you are using this bracket, you use it for DA. It's not for DA itself. Okay. So, now you will see that 
CCA is city city compensatory allowance ठीक है CCA मतलब इसका पूरा मतलब होता है आपका city compensatory allowance तो ये जो होता है आपको सिटीज के जो है टीयर्स होते हैं यानी बेस्ड ऑन कितना बड़ा कितना छोटा सिटी है एक होता है आपका टीयर वन सिटी ओके देन यू हैव व्हाट टीयर टू टीयर थ्री टीयर फोर जो सबसे बड़े महंगे सिटीज होते हैं ओके वो टीयर वन सिटी होता है तो जो ये वाला अलाउंस जब मिलता है आपको तो डेफिनेटली जब आप महंगे सिटी में है तो आपको ज्यादा मिलना चाहिए करेक्ट अगर इनको टेन थाउजेंड मिल रहा है अगर टीयर टू सिटी में कोई है समझ लीजिए उनको एट थाउजेंड मिलेगा एक रफ अमाउंट बोल रहा हूँ टीयर थ्री में मान लीजिए इनको सिक्स थाउजेंड मिलेगा टीयर फोर में मान लीजिए इनको फाइव थाउजेंड मिलेगा ओके सो दिस इज कॉल्ड ए सिटी कम्पेंसेटरी अमाउंट तो ये ये किसी लिए डिफाइन डिफाइन करते हैं कि जो आपका ट्रांसफर होता है ठीक है तो आप अगर ये टीयर थ्री से टीयर वन में चले गए तो आपका टीयर थ्री में सिक्स थाउजेंड है और टीयर वन में टेन थाउजेंड है कितना डिफरेंस है तो फोर थाउजेंड आपको एडिशनल मिलेगा सीसीएम इफ यू आर मूविंग टू हायर टीयर सिटी ओके सो दिस इज व्हाट इज अबाउट सिटी कंपेंसेटरी अलाउंस जस्ट टू मेक श्योर दैट बिकॉज यू आर मूविंग टू अ मोर एक्सपेंसिव सिटी यू यू आर मूविंग टू अ मोर एक्सपेंसिव सिटी एंड दैट शुड नॉट बिकम अ पर्सनल डिसएडवांटेज फॉर यू ठीक है और वो अदर वे राउंड भी होता है आपको अगर छोटे सिटी में भेजा है तो आपका सैलरी कम भी होगा उसको ओके सो देन अभी ठीक है ये हमने नाउ वी हैड जस्ट सीन टैक्स ये स्पेसिफाइड एम्प्लॉयज देखे और परक्विजिट्स इंक्लूड्स देखे व्हाट व्हाट आर द थिंग्स व्हिच कम अंडर द मीनिंग ऑफ परक्विजिट्स दैट वी सॉ ओके एंड फिर बाद में वी सॉ व्हाट इज स्पेसिफाइड एम्प्लॉय नाउ विल बी सीइंग व्हाट इज एग्जेम्प्टेड परक्विजिट ओके विल बेसिकली नाउ सी व्हाट इज एग्जेम्प्टेड परक्विजिट दैट इज दिस परक्विजिट्स आर नॉट टैक्सेबल इन एनी केस ठीक है ये एग्जेम्प्ट होता है और क्योंकि चलिए अभी आप लोग जब मैंने स्टार्ट किया था आप लोग बहुत सारे लोग नहीं थे ठीक है so most of you were not there when i started i am just telling you one small change okay in in your timings so now uh, you had friday saturday sunday was dt correct so friday was 7 pm to let's say 8 10 or something this is what we are this is what we are following correct friday and saturday because i had i have another class from 8:30 onwards omsm which is there only on friday and saturday okay so which is why i ended it at 7 8 10 okay so on friday and saturday and sunday we had 7 pm sunday ko hamara time kya tha aaj jaise 7 pm aaj to 7:30 se chalu ki humne 7:30 to 7 to 10:30 okay basically full timing was 7 to टेन मान लीजिए थ्री आर सेशन इट वॉज द टारगेट ठीक है अभी तो इसमें क्या चेंज किया है मैंने कि थर्सडे इज क्योंकि अभी आपका आफ्टर दिस वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट पी जी बी पी सो वी नीड बिगर सेशन ओके दिस स्मॉल वन आर सेशन इज ऑफ नो यूज फॉर एस ओके इट्स ऑलवेज गुड इफ यू थ्री थ्री एंड हाफ आर सेशन सो इट विल हेल्प अस टू हैव अ गुड डिस्कशन ठीक है आई विल गिव यू अप्रोप्रिएट अमाउंट ऑफ ब्रेक्स ठीक है ब्रेक्स वेक्स अच्छे से देंगे आप ताकि आप लोग फ्रेश रहें ओके बट सेशन रहेगा थ्री टू थ्री एंड हाफ आवर्स ओके एंड यहाँ पे क्या करेंगे कि ये सैटरडे का जो आपका सेशन है ना सेवन पी एम टू एट टेन इसको काट देंगे यू विल नॉट हैव अ क्लास ऑन सैटरडे नाउ ओके इन इट्स प्लेस ओके सैटरडे इज कट एंड नाउ फ्राइडे विल बिकम दिस सेवन आई एम मेकिंग ए सेवन थर्टी बिकॉज मोस्ट ऑफ यू are able to attend only little late isn't it so which is why if i start from 7 you miss the earlier 10 15 minutes so better than that is we start from 7:30 so i'm making it 7:30 to this is basically this will be till 10:30 okay but 
देर ऑलवेज बी अ चांस कि एंड हम कहाँ कर रहे हैं उसके ऊपर डिपेंड है ओके okay? अगर एंडिंग में सपोज कुछ अच्छा टॉपिक चल रहा है बीच में है ओके आई विल आई विल कंटिन्यू टिल इलेवन पी एम ठीक है बट इलेवन पी एम तक चल सकता है आपका सेशन सो बी ओपन दैट सेशन विल रन कैन रन टिल इलेवन बट आई विल ट्राई टू एंड इट बिफोर इलेवन बेसिकली मेरा ये रहेगा क्योंकि मोस्ट ऑफ यू टू गेट अप अर्ली इन द मॉर्निंग ठीक है तो मैं कोशिश करूंगा कि आपका ये सेवन थर्टी टू टेन थर्टी वाला सेशन है कम से कम ये कुछ नहीं तो टेन फोर्टी फाइव को तो भी मैं खत्म कर दू ओके ये मेरा कोशिश पूरा रहेगा मेरे तरफ से ओके राइट सो सेम सो नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू हैव टू सेशन लाइक दिस ये बता रहा हूँ आपको कि वील है फ्राइडे सेवन थर्टी टू टेन थर्टी टेन फोर्टी फाइव एंड संडे टेन थर्टी एंड सैटरडे वन वी आर रिमूव ओके सो ये दो क्लासेस चलेंगे अभी आपके डीटी के सो दिस गिव्स अस अबाउट दिस विल गिव अस एनी वेयर बिटवीन सिक्स टू सेवन आवर्स अ वीक विच वी आर कंफर्टेबल एज ऑफ नाउ ओके सो इन फ्यूचर इफ रिक्वायर्ड आई विल टेक सम टेक एन एक्स्ट्रा क्लास इफ रिक्वायर्ड फ्यूचर ओके विल जस्ट सी इफ वी आर लैगिंग बिहाइंड अगर कुछ ऐसा कुछ है तो मैं uh, कोई एक्स्ट्रा क्लास अनाउंस करूँगा टिल दैट तो यहाँ पे बेसिकली भले ही हमने दो दिन किया है इसको टाइम वाइज इफ यू सी वी हैव इंक्रीज द टाइम ओके देन वॉट इट वॉज वेन बी स्टार्टेड ठीक है वेन बी स्टार्टेड इट वॉज फोर एंड हाफ आवर्स ओके फोर एंड हाफ आवर्स राइट वन एंड हाफ वन एंड हाफ वन एंड हाफ इज वॉट बी स्टार्टेड एंड नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू हैव यू कैन से दिस यू कैन सेफली एज्यूम इट विल गो ऑन टिल टेन फोर्टी फाइव डेफिनेटली ओके तो यानी आपका ये हो गया सिक्स एंड हाफ आवर्स हो गया हमारा सो विच इज वाई आई डोंट थिंक वी विल हैव एनी प्रॉब्लम एज सच ठीक है सिक्स पॉइंट फाइव आवर्स हो जाएगा ये पूरा ठीक है तो ये जस्ट नोटेड डाउन दिस फॉर यू फ्रॉम नेक्स्ट फ्राइडे ऑनवर्ड सो दिस फ्राइडे वी विल टेक सैलरीज विल कंप्लीट सैलरीज फुल्ली ओके एंड बिफोर दिस फ्राइडे ऑन थर्सडे यू विल हैव शिवम सर रिविजन क्लास ऑफ सैलरीज ओके Sir, so attend that also. It will just help you. Whatever problems we have done, he'll repeat some of that. So he'll be more comfortable. Okay, so attend that also. Uh, you can check the time with him. It is evening. I know that. Okay, I think it is seven onwards. Right. If any of you have a problem, like seven p.m. is becoming a big problem, you can request to make it seven thirty. So. you can request shivam sir as well so we'll see i don't know like what is his the timing that he is adjusting so not sure whether he will go to 7:30 from 7 or not okay but you can just check agar ho sir if possible then we'll do this theek hai ye aapka friday aur sunday ka timing going forward clear need doubt here now it's friday these two are your timings now for dt okay friday and sunday right so now uh, we'll see what is exempted perquisites after this we'll go for our dinner break okay so what are exempted there are certain perquisites which are exempted okay wo ek basic perquisites hai jisko tax nahi karna chahiye basically okay there are some basic perquisites which should not be taxed hence are exempted so tea and all small snacks and all which are provided during working hours okay that is exempted right so remember the word non alcoholic beverages okay right so yani koi bhi intoxicating drink jo hai wo allowed nahi hai ye hum baat kar rahe hain chai wagre aise chai milta hai na office mein aapko chai badam milk dispenser mein sab milta hai jo correct wo sab cheeze aapki free hai Free perquisites, no tax. Food provided in working place. If employer is providing food in working place, it is exempted. Okay. Or then recreational facilities to a group of employee. Okay. So, ये ये क्या है recreational facilities? ये हो गया जैसे आपका gym होता है, office में gym रहता है, correct? Gym या टेबल टेनिस खेलने के लिए होते हैं प्रोविजंस ठीक है इसकी बात कर रहे हैं आर रिक्रिएशनल फैसिलिटीज टू अ ग्रुप ऑफ एम्प्लॉज ठीक है यहाँ पे मेन थिंग इज 
It should not be for a specific employee. It should be for a group. Next is goods sold at concessional rate. Yeah, not any goods. Goods which are manufactured by the employer. Okay. Many times the employer is working in a factory. So, so uh, that product is given free of cost to the employees. Correct. Jaha kaam kar raha hai, wo product to kuch milna chahi. Correct. Employee ko. Minimum right. So, goods sold to employee at concessional rate. Okay. And yaha pe yaad, yaad rakna yaha pe not free. Free comes under perquisite. Okay. This is under concessional rate. Right. So, yaha concessional rate means agar uska cost of production the cost of production of that good is say 100 okay employer is provide, providing at 40 okay giving at 40 right if the worker is working in a maggie company right say maggie company then employer gives uh, all employee all employees a packet of 20 maggies let us say. 20 maggie Okay, so it gives it at let's say 25% cost. So this comes under this, okay. Concessional rates. Now conveyance facility, it's not conveyance allowance. Okay. So conveyance allowance is exempt to what extent? Anyone remembers? Conveyance allowance kitana exempt. To what extent is conveyance allowance exempt? The 2500. How much? The 2500. 2500. We are, we are talking about conveyance allowance. Okay, jo conveyance means Kya ho jata hai office to home and home to office? No, sir, it's not convenient. That is uh, from office to home, not. That is from office work to market. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah you're right. You're right. Sorry. Okay. So basically, so I am I am talking referring to transport allowance. Yeah, yeah. Pe actually, jo hai, jo aap jo bol rahe sahi hai. Okay. So, uh, okay. Now, if you can tell me about transport allowance. Okay. Yahan pe jo hai, ye, ye conveyance facility bola hai na. Again, actually, ye uh, match up kar raha hai transport allowance ke saath, not conveyance. Okay, you can see this. You can see this. If you read this further, it is journey between office and residence and vice versa. Okay, so actually, although they have used the word conveyance here, okay, if we compare with allowance, you can compare it with transport allowance. Okay, now I'm going to put it on transport allowance. Okay, you can see conveyance. Nam use kiya hai, conveyance facility. In yaha pe wo meaning ye bata raha hai ki apna hum jo transport allowance jo bolte hain na, wo bol raha hai actually. Okay, likha hai na clear. Journey between office and residence. Yeah, commuting to office and home. So abhi iska bata. How do you become कितना कितना होता है 1600 तो 1600 इस वन आंसर पर एनम पर मन पर मन एनी अदर आंसर आप लोग रिवाइज कीजिए ठीक है आप लोग रिवाइज नहीं कर रहे हैं मुझे ये लग रहा है यू आर नॉट रिवाइजिंग ओके कीप रिवाइजिंग इट्स वेरी वेरी इम्पोर्टेंट डीटी इज अ वेरी वेरी लार्ज सब्जेक्ट जैसे आपका पीजीबीपी चालू हो जाएगा ना पीछे जाने का आपको फुर्सत नहीं मिलेगा बिल्कुल सो जस्ट रिवाइज दिस थिंग्स एंड कीप सो 1600 पर मंथ वाज इट वाज देयर फॉर्मर्ली नाउ इट इज नॉट देयर ओके सो नाउ इट इज फुल्ली टैक्सेबल ट्रांसपोर्ट अलाउंस इज फुल्ली टैक्सेबल 
okay but for only for blind orthopedically handicapped okay etc for, for these people the exemption is 3200 per month इसको मैं आपको बता देता हूं क्योंकि हमारा डिस्कशन आ गया है तो स ठीक है ये हमारा अलाउंसेस पार्ट है इन दिस ये सारे आपके हैं टैक्सेबल अलाउंसेस ठीक है ये हमेशा टैक्सेबल रहेंगे ऑल दिस विल बी फुल्ली टैक्सेबल ये देख लेना एक बार ओके और ये भी जो है गवर्नमेंट एम्प्लॉज को डिडक्शन मिलता है बट यू आर कॉलिंग इट फुल्ली टैक्सेबल बिकॉज यू विल इंक्लूड इन गवर्नमेंट एम्प्लॉयज इनकम ऑल्सो एंटरटेनमेंट अलाउंस का इंक्लूड करेंगे अब बाद में डिडक्शन डिडक्शन पार्ट में जाएंगे देर यू विल गिव दिस डिडक्शन ओके सो विच इज वाई इट विल बी कॉल्ड एज अ टेक्सीबल अलाउंस ओनली ऑल्सो लेटर ऑन यू आर गेटिंग डिडक्शन ओके सो चलिए ये हो गया मैं आपको बता रहा था जो वट एवर चलिंग यू ठीक है दिस इज द पार्ट विच यू सेट प्रियंका कम्यूटिंग बिटवीन ऑफिस एंड रेजिडेंस इज नॉट ट्रीटेड एज कन्वेंस हेयर ठीक है ओके सो बट इन कन्वेंस फैसिलिटी जो बोला गया है ना देर दे हैव यूज दिस मीनिंग ट्रांसपोर्ट अलाउंस मीनिंग दिस इज द वन दिस इज योर ट्रांसपोर्ट अलाउंस ओके कम्यूटिंग बिटवीन रेजिडेंस एंड प्लेस ऑफ ड्यूटी एंड डिडक्शन इज अवेलेबल Only if blind, deaf, and dumb, or orthopedically handicapped, exemption is three thousand two hundred per month. So that your earlier it was for all employees it was one thousand six hundred. Okay, but after standard deduction earlier was forty thousand. It is it was increased to fifty thousand. Standard deduction was in, increased to fifty thousand, and this was withdrawn. Okay, so you don't have this sixteen thousand. Or एक चीज़ मैं बोलता हूँ आप लोगों को in tax never use old material okay so i always say that never use old material so use so whatever material i am giving use it okay and use your study material now we will have a latest study material also okay if there is any uh, updation on that i will include in your notes and give it to you apart from that humko last mein ek aur cheez will have to see jo main aapko bataunga theek hai मे बी लाइक लेट एस से वंस अवर न्यू स्टडी मटेरियल कम्स सो वी विल कम टू नो कितना उन्होंने अपडेट किया है और क्या नहीं किया है ठीक है जो नहीं किया है वो छोटे थोड़े से पार्ट रहेंगे वो वो मैं आपको सेपरेटली बताऊंगा वो नोट्स में इंक्लूडेड रहेंगे बट इट विल बी हाईलाइटेड सेपरेटली दैट ओके दिस इज नॉट अ पार्ट ऑफ ए स्टडी मटेरियल बट दिस हैज चेंज आपको फॉर यू ऑल इज योर अटेम्प्ट इज डिसम्बर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू अटेम्प्ट ओके चार्जर तो दिसंबर के लिए आपको जो है आपका हमारा जो इंस्टीट्यूट है सीएम है वो बोलता है कि You should know amendment six months prior to exam. Prior to exam, okay. So exam is normally. Ah, uh, your start date is tenth December, okay. So for a general purpose, ye December ke dates ko ap ignore kar sakte hain the days. And then if you count six months, you need to do exemptions till thirty first of May, okay. Iske baad jo bhi exam, uh, not exemptions. Kya bola maine ye? अमेंडमेंट सॉरी ठीक है जो भी अमेंडमेंट्स है 
वो हमको वी हैव टू डू टिल थर्टी फर्स्ट ऑफ मे कौन सा ईयर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू ओके इसके बाद वाले हमको कोई लेना देना नहीं इसके बाद आएंगे आएंगे एग्जामेशन अमेंडमेंट सॉरी सो ये जो आ, इसके बाद जो आएंगे ना दिसंबर तक वो हम यूज करेंगे आपके नेक्स्ट अटेम्प्ट में ओके यू ओनली नीड टू नो टिल सिक्स मंथ्स प्रायर टू एग्जाम ठीक है सो आई विल बी गिविंग यू ऑल अमेंडमेंट्स वॉट यू नीड ठीक है हम स्टेप बाय स्टेप चल रहे हैं तो वी हैव स्टार्टेड विथ योर एग्जिस्टिंग स्टडी मटेरियल जो अभी है अभी जो इंस्टीट्यूट का रिलीज डे है स्टार्टिंग विथ एग्जिस्टिंग स्टडी मटेरियल ओके अब इंस्टीट्यूट का लेट एक और स्टडी मटेरियल आएगा आपके एग्जाम के लिए रिलीज होगा बाय सेप्टेम्बर आई थिंक वंस दे रिलीज इट वट एवर अपडेशन दे हैव डन ठीक है वो हमारे लिए दैट विल बी मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट बिकॉज दैट विल हिंट दैट दीज आर द चेंजेस विच द इंस्टीट्यूट इज सींग एज इम्पॉर्टेंट सो इसको आई विल इनकॉर्पोरेट फुल्ली फर्स्ट ठीक है ये जो नया जो आएगा इसके बाद में जो है अराउंड लेटेस्ट से अराउंड अक्टूबर में आपको आई विल जस्ट टेल यू ये जो टिल थर्टी फर्स्ट डिसम्बर के वॉट आर द एडिशनल अमेंडमेंट विच वी नीड टू नो ज्यादा नहीं रहेंगे इसीलिए इसको मैं बाद में बताऊंगा यू विल नॉट हैव एनी प्रॉब्लम मैक्सिमम हमको देखना पड़ेगा थ्री फोर अमेंडमेंट्स रहेंगे ऐसे कुछ तीन चार ज्यादा नहीं रहेंगे तो वो मैं आपको सेपरेटली हाईलाइट करके आई विल सेंड इट टू यू इन अक्टूबर ठीक है ओके तो वो कर दूंगा और इवन इफ रिक्वायर्ड इवन हमारे नोट्स में भी वी कैन डू दैट अपडेशन तो मैं हाईलाइट करके आपको दोनों भी मैं बता दूंगा दैट दैट इज ये चेंज है and in in our study material this is the position ठीक है तो ये करेंगे लेकिन आप लोग ये जैसे मैं बोल रहा हूँ ये डी टी बहुत बड़ा है ठीक है अगर मैं एक मैं बोल रहा हूँ कि एक थ्री एंड हाफ आवर्स का या थ्री आवर्स का मेरा एक लेक्चर है ओके ये करने को आपको अच्छे से इसको पूरी तरह कब्जा करने को यू विल नीड थ्री डेज डेट इज वट एवर आप कितना वन एंड हाफ आवर्स इफ यू आर स्पेंडिंग ऑन स्टडीज You will need three days to really know. So this, ये जो दो क्लासेस होंगे आपके थ्री थ्री एंड हाफ आवर्स के इट विल फॉर दिस यू हैव टू स्टडी एवरी डे समथिंग एटलीस्ट ठीक है इसको बिल्कुल आपका ना एक बार हम पी जी बी पी में पैर रख देंगे ना पी जी बी पी और कैपिटल गेन इट इज लाइक इट इज लाइक एन ओशन फिर आपको वापस जाके रिविजन करने का चांस नहीं मिलेगा ओके okay? तो so, ये करते रहिए रिविजन्स uh, करते रहिए आई थिंक ठीक है आपका एग्जाम भी होगा वेरी वेरी सुन योर सैलरी टेस्ट विल बी देयर ओके सो दीज आर ऑल एग्जेमटेड परक्विजिट्स ठीक है ये सब हो गया एंड देन नेक्स्ट इज ट्रेनिंग ठीक है एनी ट्रेनिंग ऑफिशियल ट्रेनिंग ऑफ एम्प्लॉज इंक्लूडिंग बोर्डिंग एंड लॉजिंग ठीक है कंपनी स्पॉन्सरिंग कई बार इट इज रिक्वायर्ड फॉर कंपनी पर्पज मेनी टाइम्स कंपनी स्पॉन्सर्स इफ यू वॉन्ट टू लर्न समथिंग करेक्ट कई कंपनियों में इट गिव यू स्पॉन्सर्स ठीक है दैट इज एक्ट ओके ना ये पॉइंट फिर से आ गया सर्विस इज रेंडर्ड आउटसाइड इंडिया पर रिक्वेस्ट अलाउड आउटसाइड इंडिया बाय द गवर्नमेंट टू सिटीजन ऑफ इंडिया फॉर रेंडरिंग सर्विस आउटसाइड इंडिया ठीक है इस पॉइंट तीन जगह पॉइंट टच होता है This point is touched in three cases. Okay, can you tell me what are the three cases? Services rendered outside India by an Indian citizen and employer is government. There are three cases which I have been telling you many times. No. तो आप लोग को यू हैव टू रिवाइज अ लॉट ओके आप लोग तैयार नहीं हो बिल्कुल तो ये यहाँ पे तीन है फर्स्ट इज कम्स योर सैलरी ओके सैलरी ऑफ एन इंडियन सिटीजन फॉर रेंडरिंग सर्विस फॉर गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया आउटसाइड इंडिया प्लेस ऑफ सर्विस इज आउटसाइड इंडिया एम्प्लॉयर इज गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया सैलरी टैक्सेबल डीम टू एक्रोर अराइज इन इंडिया ठीक है तीन मैंने बोला था दूसरा इज अलाउंसेस uh, अलाउंसेस में भी हमने पढ़े कि दिस इज एग्जाम करके अलाउंसेस इज एग्जाम थर्ड थिंग इज परक्विजिट अभी हम परक्विजिट सेक्शन कर रहे हैं तो यहाँ परक्विजिट में वही चीज देखे हमने दिस इज अगेन एग्जाम 
ठीक है ये आपको बिल्कुल दिमाग में रहना चाहिए ये तीन चीज ये किसके लिए है हु, हु, ये किसके लिए बेसिकली है ये है इंडियन सिटीजन है पर्सन इज इंडियन सिटीजन ओके एम्प्लॉयर इज गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया ठीक है प्लेस ऑफ सर्विस इज आउटसाइड इंडिया ये एक तीन कॉम्बिनेशन है तीनों में तीनों में सेम है ओके इंडियन सिटीजन गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया इज एम्प्लॉयर एंड हीज गिवन सर्विसेज आउटसाइड इंडिया सैलरी टैक्सेबल अलाउंसेज एंड परक्विजेड एग्जाम ओके राइट सो देन नेक्स्ट क्या है हमारा कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन इन सम स्पेसिफाइड स्कीम्स इज एग्जाम ओके सो वॉट आर द स्कीम्स एम्प्लॉयर्स कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन टू पेंशन और डिफर्ड एन्यूटी स्कीम्स ठीक है कोई पेंशन स्कीम डिफर्ड एन्यूटी स्कीम ओके डिफर्ड एन्यूटी यानी आप अभी प्रीमियम या कुछ भरेंगे एंड यू विल गेट पेंशन लेटर ऑन दैट इज कॉल्ड डिफर्ड एन्यूटी देन एम्प्लॉयर्स कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन टू स्टाफ ग्रुप इंश्योरेंस स्कीम ओके स्टाफ ग्रुप इंश्योरेंस इज लाइक जिसको हम मेडिक्लेम बोलते हैं सबका कंपनी एक साथ कराती है और मेडिक्लेम देती है करेक्ट सो दिस इज मेडिक्लेम इज ऑल्सो एग्जाम वी ऑल नो बट इन मेडिक्लेम वेर एवर यू गेट हॉस्पिटलाइज वट एवर यू गेट इट इज फुल्ली एग्जाम फ्रॉम टैक्स ठीक है सो देन लास्ट इज एनुअल प्रीमियम पेड बाय एम्प्लॉयर ऑन पर्सनल एक्सीडेंट पॉलिसी अफेक्टेड बाय हिम फॉर एम्प्लॉय ठीक है वेर इज एनी पर्सनल एक्सीडेंट पॉलिसी वो प्रीमियम इज ऑल्सो एन एग्जाम परक्विजिट तो ये तीन चीज बस याद रखना है ठीक है तो दीज आर ये एग्जेमटेड परक्विजिट है इसका आपको टैक्स नहीं लगता राइट देन लोन एम्प्लॉयर अगर लोन दे रहा है ठीक है लोन कैन बी नील रेट और कंसेशनल रेट ठीक है नील रेट यानी आपको यू आर नॉट ही इज नॉट चार्जिंग एनी इंटरेस्ट कंसेशनल रेट मीन इज चार्जिंग लेस इंटरेस्ट देन द मार्केट वैल्यू ठीक है इफ लोन इज अप टू ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड ठीक है तो ये दिस परक्विजिट इज नॉट टैक्सेबल यानी अगर इफ लोन इज अप टू ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड ठीक है देन नील रेट और कंसेशनल रेट इज नॉट परक्विजिट ओके एग्जाम ठीक है और ये ये आएगा इसके बारे में हम थोड़ा बाद में बात करेंगे स्पेसिफाइड डिजीजेस के बारे में रूल थ्री ए ओके सो रूल थ्री में वी टॉक अबाउट सम बिग डिजीजेस ठीक है इसका डिस्कशन थोड़ा आगे आएगा आपका सो इंटरेस्ट फ्री लोन फॉर मेडिकल ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ दीज डिजीजेस ओके दैट इज एग्जाम बिकॉज दिस ऑलरेडी इज अ वेरी बिग डिजीज ठीक है इसका सब हम देखेंगे थोड़ा बाद में ओके सी दिस इन अ डिफरेंट सेक्शन Now, medical. Right. Yes. Hello. Anyone wanted to say something? Chali. Okay. So, then next is. मेडिकल फैसिलिटी प्रोवाइडेड एट ऑफिस इज एग्जाम ठीक है लाइक इन ऑफिस आप गिर गए कोई चोट लग गई ऑफिस में आपको मेडिकल फैसिलिटी दिया गया उसका कोई चार्ज नहीं कितना भी खर्चा हो ठीक है अगर आप गिर गए हो या कुछ सम फ्रैक्चर और समथिंग इज है डॉक्टर वॉज कॉल्ड देयर एंड इन ऑफिस यू हैव बीन गिवेन ट्रीटमेंट वर्थ फिफ्टी थाउजेंड ओके इट इज एग्जाम Okay, so this is exempt, and uh, but medical allowance we know is fully taxable. Okay, so next is periodicals and journals for discharge of work, magazine and all which come in office, right? In for many professionals, professional companies and all, they need to get many latest magazines. With the rates and all that, tax journals, all that. So this is all not taxable. 
okay so if the if the employee is uh, getting it for his own work only only for him for his work still it is not taxable acha telephone mobile phones iske jo bill hai aapka telephone mobile ka bill agar if employer is paying paying whether it is a direct payment to company telephone company or you are paying and your employee is reimbursing you back theek hai dono bhi fully exempt hai theek hai ye ek aisa hai ki ye jo hai ye puri tarah exempt hai aapka telephone mobile phone theek hai agar mobile bill diya hai company ne aapka mobile bill 1200 company ne diya hai to exempt okay telephone bill diya hai whatever it is exempt telephone and mobile bills is exempt यहाँ पे यू डोंट नीड दैट योर यहाँ पे जो है ये आपका सपोज दिस इज योर एम्प्लॉई ओके दिस योर एम्प्लॉयर ओके एंड दिस इज द फोन कंपनी और मोबाइल कंपनी वट एवर ओके सो ये दोनों भी चीजें कवर करता है ओके वेर You are getting the bill, ठीक है? Employer has given you a phone. Whatever bill bill is coming, he is giving directly here. This is also covered. And secondly, if you have taken a phone, okay, and uh, you are paying the bill, and your employer is giving back the or re reimbursing the amount, this is also covered. ठीक है? So mo mobile bill or phone bill in, of any in in any case, if you are getting, ठीक है? It's fully exempt. नेक्स्ट इज फ्री एजुकेशनल फैसिलिटी ठीक है थोड़ा सा और है मैं फिर आपको आई गिव यू फिफ्टीन मिनट्स ब्रेक ओके फ्री एजुकेशनल फैसिलिटी टू चिल्ड्रेन ऑफ एम्प्लॉई इन एन इंस्टीट्यूशन ओन मेंटेन बाय द एम्प्लॉय ठीक है इट इज इफ द कॉस्ट इज अप टू वन थाउजेंड पर मंथ पर चाइल्ड इट इज एग्जाम ठीक है और इसमें देर इज नथिंग लाइक टू चिल्ड्रेन in children education allowance postal allowance we had up to a maximum of two children that is not there yet okay so this is when uh, that educational institution is maintained by employer himself okay either is owning it or he is running it okay and that's why your 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 child is getting the facility then if his cost is up to 1000 per month for any number of children okay and aapke panch bacche hain so for you it will be 5000 per month theek okay? hai for each child basically each our child ka aap dekhenge okay right so for five children means you will get 1005 times next is computer or laptop for use at office or home theek okay? hai jaise har aajkal sab employee ke paas work from home ka zamana hai correct so jo laptop ab ghar aate ho leke aate ho वही लैपटॉप में हम हमारा पर्सनल भी कुछ काम कर लेते हैं करेक्ट सो बट इट इज एग्जाम इफ द ओनरशिप इज नॉट ट्रांसफर टू ओनरशिप विल बी विद द एम्प्लॉय ओके चलिए एक काम करते हैं अभी बहुत लंबा हो गया सेशन तो मैं आपको एक ब्रेक दे ही देता हूं यू कैन कम बैक एट फिफ्टीन नाइन ओके ठीक है अभी हो रहा है एट थर्टी नाइन लगभग फिफ्टीन मिनट्स का ब्रेक ओके बैक यू कैन कम बैक एट एट फिफ्टी फाइव ठीक है और नो नीड टू गो आउट ऑफ द सेशन ओके
Okay, so <clears throat> we'll continue. ठीक है तो हम exempted perquisites देख रहे थे. Okay, we're seeing all exempted perquisites. So last one was computer or laptop. Next one is movable assets, sale or gift of any movable asset other than car and electronic items. Okay, to employ. After being used by the employer for ten or more years, okay. Then any movable asset which the employer has used for more than ten years, ten or more years, okay. After that, if he is uh, gifting it or selling it to the employee, then it is not a perquisite. So it, it is assumed that in ten years it has lost all its value, basically, okay. Right. And this is not for car and electronic items. Okay. LTC is a separate section. It's the very last in perquisite. Very last is LTC, right? And then the chapter will come to an end. So LTC will see later. Leave travel concession. Okay. It is a it is an exempt perquisite, but it has some conditions. So we'll see that in. That section, okay. Next is rent-free official residence provided to judge of High Court, Supreme Court. Okay, and then rent-free furnished residence, including maintenance, to official of Parliament, Union Minister, or leader of opposition in Parliament. Okay, so Union Minister is Central Minister. Okay, and. Uh, Leader of opposition in parliament, you already know. Official of parliament is not member of parliament. ठीक है? तो official of parliament ये है जो parliament से related जो officials होते हैं ना, वो लोग हैं ये basically. आप जब ये भी देखते हैं question ये सब आता है parliament. See when the say this is the chair of the speaker, okay? And then you have the parliament like this theek hai okay so you have parliament is seated like this you have the chairman here okay aur yahan pe samne chairman ke samne agar aapne dekhe honge ek desk hota hai aisa chota itna desk correct log kaam karte hain wahan pe They are, okay. They are all. They are all come under officials of parliament. Okay. Apart from that, you have got some certain level of IAS officers and all that. They also come under officials of parliament. Okay. So rent-free furnished residence, the official of parliament, union minister, leader of opposition in parliament. Okay. Here yeah, free here basically, right? Accommodation provided. On transfer of an employee in a hotel, okay, up to fifteen days in aggregate. Aggregate का मतलब transfer हुआ है. He has he stayed in a hotel for five days, okay. After that he stayed in his friend's house. Then again after some days he stayed in hotel for eight days, like that. ऐसा break up कर सकते हैं. ठीक है. Need not be continuous. So fifteen days in aggregate is exempt. Okay, on transfer of an employee, right? And second is one. Okay, second one is accommodation provided in a remote area. Okay, if you see what are the examples here, so mining site, onshore exploration site, that is oil exploration. वगैरह करना पड़ता है, search करना पड़ता है, correct? Only then you get oil later on. So exploration site, project execution site. Dam site where you build dam, power generation and offshore site. So if you see closely, see all these places, they would be, uh, they would not be within the city. If you see all these, these are all in a remote place. All these would be okay. So if, if an employee is employed in such place and is provided an accommodation there, that is exempt. Okay. So here point, this point is different from this point. Okay. Here point a lot. The next is what tax on non-monetary perquisite paid paid by employer on behalf of employee. Okay, 
तो अगर यहां पे आप लोगों को याद होगा कि हमने ये बोले थे कि टैक्स पेड बाय एम्प्लॉयर ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ एम्प्लॉय ओके टैक्स पेड बाय एम्प्लॉयर ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ एम्प्लॉय ठीक है दिस वॉज अ परक्विजिट राइट वी आर टॉक अबाउट दिस हमने ये देखे थे ये परक्विजिट है करके प्रोफेशनल टैक्स के एग्जाम्पल भी हमने लिए थे राइट वी डन वन प्रॉब्लम ऑल्सो वेर वी सेट दैट इट वॉज सेट दैट प्रोफेशनल टैक्स ऑफ एम्प्लॉय वॉज पेड बाय एम्प्लॉय दैट वॉज टेकन एज परक्विजिट करेक्ट है ना तो यहां हम बात करें टैक्स ऑन नॉन मोनिटरी परक्विजिट पेड बाय एम्प्लॉय ठीक है दिस इज एग्जेप्ट इसके पीछे एक मेन रीजन ये है वी कैन जस्ट टेक द सेम एग्जाम्पल जो हमने पहले लिया था एक गार्डनर का करेक्ट ओके गार्डनर का ठीक है अब एक गार्डनर को बंगला दे दिया है ओके राइट अब अगर ये ये परक्विजिट बन के आ रहा है मान लीजिए परक्विजिट बन के नॉन मोनिटरी परक्विजिट ओके एंड यर द परक्विजिट वैल्यू इज लेट अस से फिफ्टी थाउजेंड पर मंथ ओके एंड लेट अस अज्यूम चलो इसके ऊपर टैक्स बनता है फाइव थाउजेंड ठीक है पांच हजार कहां से लाएगा गार्डन करेक्ट कहां से टैक्स भरेगा इस, इसने थोड़ी मांगा था बंगला करेक्ट तो ये मांगेंगे इससे तो ठीक नहीं है करेक्ट सो विच इज वाई फॉर टू अवॉइड केसेस लाइक दिस you know the tax paid on non monetary perquisite by employer it is exempt okay that is not perquisite theek okay. hai and then uh, health club sports club facility and all that gym and all that that is all exempt okay ye ho gaya aapke list of exempt perquisites next we'll talk about valuation of perquisites theek okay. hai तो कैसे पता चलेगा कि ये परक्विजिट का वैल्यू क्या वैल्यू पता चलेगा तभी तो आप टैक्स देंगे करेक्ट मैं बोलूंगा कि ये घर है या बंगला है इस बंगले के ऊपर टैक्स लगाना है यू विल नॉट बी एबल टू पे टैक्स ऑन अ बंगलो और अ हाउस करेक्ट यू हैव टू फर्स्ट असाइन अ वैल्यू टू इट करेक्ट ओनली देन यू विल बी एबल टू कैलकुलेट टैक्स ऑन इट सो वी आर नाउ डूइंग दैट वैल्यूएशन ऑफ परक्विजिट Starting with valuation of rent-free unfurnished accommodation, right? So unfurnished accommodation means जो furnished नहीं है, यानी furnished वो है जो आपको घर के साथ सारे आपको furniture, TV ये सब सब कुछ मिला है आपको, ठीक है आपको बस जाके रहना है, that is furnished. Unfurnished is you have got the house, okay, and you will have to buy your furniture and all that in it, okay. So now valuation of rent-free unfurnished accommodation is taxable for all employees except judges of high court supreme court and which we have just seen official of parliament union minister leader of opposition except these it is taxable for everyone okay government non government everyone it is taxable okay only except exception is judges of high court supreme court official of parliament or union minister and a leader of opposition ओके ठीक है सो चलिए सो व्हाट इज अकोमोडेशन पे इट कैन बी अ फिक्स्ड एज वेल एज फ्लोटिंग स्ट्रक्चर ओके फ्लोटिंग स्ट्रक्चर में क्या आ जाता है आपका या कैरावान मोबाइल होम शिप एटसेट्रा ओके यू कैन बी प्रोवाइडेड अकोमोडेशन इन दिस थिंग्स आल्सो सो दिस इज आल्सो अ परक्विजिट ओके इन अ फ्लोटिंग स्ट्रक्चर फ्लोटिंग मींस एसेंशियली पानी में फ्लोट करना नहीं इट मींस मूवेबल स्ट्रक्चर Okay, staying in a movable structure. Normally, accommodation will be what? It will be a fixed structure. Okay, these all things will come: house, flat, farmhouse, accommodation, hotel, motel. Motel is little uh, outside your uh, city limits normally. Okay, so motel me jam log uh, trip trip ke liye jaate hain door. Okay, a door kahi agar accommodation rakha gaya hai. It is normally it will be in interior parts. 
ओके होटल मतलब होटल मतलब आपको विद इन सिटी में बहुत होटल्स मिल जाएंगे ठीक सो अदरवाइज टेक्निकली देर इज नो डिफरेंस बिटवीन होटल एंड मोटल सर्विस अपार्टमेंट ये तो नाम सुना ही होगा आपने ओके सर्विस अपार्टमेंट में क्या रहता है आपको वो जैसे होटल में तो जैसे बहुत सारे लोग रहते हैं करेक्ट अलग अलग जगह आप सर्विस अपार्टमेंट इट विल बी लाइक अ हाउस ठीक है सो यू कैन स्टे देर टिल यू स्टे देर लाइक यू कैन कुक योर ओन फूड एंड ऑल इट विल बी लाइक अ हाउस ठीक है वो दैट्स कॉल्ड एज सर्विस अपार्टमेंट गेस्ट हाउस एक्सेट्रा ये सब फिक्स स्ट्रक्चर ठीक है सो लेट्स गो अहेड एंड सी हाउ टू वैल्यू इट वैल्यूएशन एम्प्लॉयज आर डिवाइडेड इन टू थ्री कैटेगरीज ठीक है सो थ्री कैटेगरीज ऑफ एम्प्लॉयज ओके वन इज सी जी एस जी अंडरटेकिंग अंडर द कंट्रोल ऑफ गवर्नमेंट अंडरटेकिंग अंडर द कंट्रोल ऑफ गवर्नमेंट मतलब क्या हो गया गवर्नमेंट कंपनी पब्लिक सेक्टर ऑल दैट ओके विच इज द गवर्नमेंट कंट्रोल फुल्ली सो तीन कैटेगरी में विल इन थ्री कैटेगरीज वी विल लर्न हाउ टू कंप्यूट द वैल्यू ऑफ परपज इट वन इज फॉर एम्प्लॉयज ऑफ सी जी एस जी अंडरटेकिंग अंडर द कंट्रोल ऑफ गवर्नमेंट ठीक है सेकेंड वन इज अ स्पेशल केस accommodation provided by the government to an employee serving on deputation okay so yahan pe ye hai deputation ka matlab hai ki humne uh, we had discussed i think previously correct deputation meaning so isme here what happens is uh, you send your employee to some other place okay for a short time for some work so this normally happens for uh, technical employees ठीक है इफ अ न्यू साइट इज ओपन देन सम टेक्निकल एम्प्लॉयज आर सेंड देयर देयर टू स्टे देयर फॉर से 5 6 मंथ्स एंड व्हाटएवर गेट ऑल द कनेक्शंस फिक्स्ड एंड दे विल कम बैक लाइक दैट ओके देयर आर वेरियस एग्जांपल्स ऑफ डेपुटेशन सो बेसिकली डेपुटेशन मींस यू आर गोइंग समवेयर टू अ प्लेस व्हिच इज नॉट योर रेगुलर प्लेस ऑफ वर्क एंड यू विल बी स्टेइंग देयर फॉर सम टाइम ओके फॉर बिजनेस पर्पस So accommodation provided by government. This is only government, okay? Not any deputation. Government to an employee on deputation. This second, then third is other employees. So now, as you can see here, it's it's only C G S G and central government government undertaking. Okay, here it's a very very small. This one is a very small thing, and government is sending an employee on deputation. So all the main things, all most of the things, let us say. Ninety-eight percent of the things will get covered in other employees. Okay, okay. These are your three categories of employees okay, for valuation. So let us take the first one. This one first. Central and state government employee. Okay, uh, including military person or undertaking under the control of government. Okay. So this is uh, the first one. So, if accommodation is provided by them, then what will happen? Value of perquisite will be the license fee as per government rules. So here you don't have to break your head too much on this. Okay, the license fee will be given to you in the question. Okay, you don't have to search it from somewhere or anything. Okay, straight away the license fee will be given. Along with license fee, they'll give some other fee and all. So you should be able to pick up the license fee for this purpose. That's all. Okay, value of perquisite will be license fee as a, as one figure it will be given. Okay, license fee basically is there. This is government rules for various areas. What is the rate fee and all that? Okay. So remember here that employees of local authority and foreign government are not covered. Above what we what did we see here? We saw C G S G. and they are undertaking undertaking fully under their control so this is like a statutory corporation basically okay statutory corporation or public sector right government company all that is covered but local authority is not there that's why employees of local authority or foreign government in any way will not be there just be alert to this okay theek hai yahan pe yaad rakhna hai aapko ki jo pehla wala hai इसमें आपका लोकल अथॉरिटी नहीं है ये ध्यान में रखना है आपको ठीक है फॉरेन गवर्नमेंट तो नहीं रहेगा आपको तो मालूम ही जाता फॉरेन गवर्नमेंट इज फॉर इज अ प्राइवेट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ठीक है 
फॉरेन गवर्नमेंट की का कोई रेलेवेंस नहीं है इट इज नॉट गवर्नमेंट ओके सो देन दिस इज फर्स्ट वन सेकेंड वाला ये आपका डेप्यूटेशन वाला लेट सी so what what you have to do in the first one just take the license okay second one accommodation provided by cgsg okay to an employee serving on deputation okay with any body under the control of such government okay the accommodated accommodation provided by cgsg to an employee serving on deputation okay so deputation wala case aaya to aapko bas ek chhota sa ek table hai सेम टेबल विल यूज फॉर द अदर्स लास्ट वन ऑल्सो ये ये टेबल को पढ़ना कैसे है मैं बता दू स्टडी मटेरियल में थोड़ा बहुत कॉम्प्लेक्स वे में है ओके तो आप इससे इसमें से जाइए इट विल बी इजियर फॉर यू सो दिस इज पॉपुलेशन एज पर टू थाउजेंड वन सेंसेस ठीक है तो ये है सबसे पहले पॉपुलेशन एज पर टू थाउजेंड वन सेंसेस ओके This population as per 2001 census, ठीक है इसके बाद एक और सेंसस हुआ है 2011, फिर 2021 का नहीं हो पाया कोविड के कारण ओके बिकॉज ऑफ कोविड टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी सेंसेस डिड हैपन ओके लेकिन आवर इंस्टीट्यूट इज स्टिल यूजिंग डेटा ऑफ द टू थाउजेंड वन सेंसेस तो हमको विल हैव टू कंटिन्यू टू यूज दिस ठीक है okay 2001 census is what is applicable to your course okay so yahan pe aapke niche se chalu karna theek hai start from here theek hai if the population is up to 10 lakhs next is up to 25 lakhs but more than 10 lakhs so 10 lakhs to niche wala aa gaya na pehle so more than 10 lakhs mein so up to 25 lakhs up you can just remember easily like this up to 10 lakhs then up to 20 25 lakhs definitely is met up to 10 lakhs nahi rahega covered nahi rahega right and last one is more than 25 lakhs so up to 10 lakhs up to 25 lakhs more than 25 lakhs and this is and yahan pe accommodation is owned by the employer okay so jab tak till when they are in deputation जिस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में वो डेप्यूटेशन करके गए ना जिस बॉडी में सो दे दे आर देयर एम्प्लॉयर्स देयर एम्प्लॉयज ओके डेप्यूटेशन में जब तक वो डेप्यूटेशन में रहते हैं दे आर द एम्प्लॉयज ऑफ द अदर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सो अकोमोडेशन शुड बी ओन्ड बाय द एम्प्लॉयर यहाँ पे एम्प्लॉयर है जहां पे गए हैं डेप्यूटेशन पे वो वो मतलब है ओके सो सर एम्प्लॉयर इज that organization where you have gone on deputation okay salary is for the period when employee occupied accommodation same thing we did in house rent allowance also correct so it will always be considered for the period when the accommodation is occupied okay there it was period during which the rented accommodation is occupied in hra okay so chali so isme bas ye karna hai aapko up to 10 lakhs 7.5% of salary Up to twenty-five lakhs, ten percent of salary. More than twenty-five lakhs, fifteen percent of salary. ठीक है. एक चीज़ मैं आपको general I'll tell you. ठीक है. For normally, see the population will be given in the problem. Okay. How much is the population that will be given? If it is not given, also for certain cities, you you can know it yourself. ठीक है. One is आप जो uh, four main cities हैं. Delhi, Mumbai, Kolkata, Chennai. Okay, these four main cities. Hai. After that, what are the main cities you can remember? Is our Bangalore, correct? And your Hyderabad, correct? And Pune. Let me stop here. Can you? These are some main cities, correct? Which you can remember. ये सब जो है ना दे आर वे अबाउट ट्वेंटी फाइव लैक्स देर वे अबाउट ट्वेंटी फाइव लैक्स सो इनमें से कोई सिटी आया ना सो नेचुरली फिफ्टीन परसेंट विल अप्लाई सिर्फ मैं एक एडिशनली आपको बता के रख रहा हूँ ओके सो जस्ट रिमेम्बर दिस फोर मेन सिटीज महानगर हमारे राइट 
then Bangalore and Hyderabad, two software cities. Pune is also a software city. Just remember this much. Okay. So this all will be 15% of salary. So up salary aga to you. Meaning of salary aja aga, correct? Ye hai meaning of salary, but, but there's nothing to worry. Mai batata usko. Ye but simple way mein you can understand. Okay. So meaning of this salary is, and good news is, whole thing, this table, as well as this meaning of salary, you can use for the third point also. Okay. Yaan pe, uh, HRA salary mein what is there? Basic DA is if and commission, correct? Leave commission, but basic or DA if le le na, okay? Now take the taxable, fully taxable things. Bonus commission fees are always fully taxable, correct? Just take those things, bonus commission fees, okay? And after this, what you have to take is all other taxable allowances, only taxable amount. ठीक है, so यानी इसमें आपको सिर्फ taxable amount लेना है, जैसे HRA है suppose, HRA का जो part exempt है उसको छोड़ देना है, जो taxable है बस वही लेना है, then HRA just leave out the exempt part, take the taxable part. Similarly for all it, all other allowances, anything is exempt, leave it out and take only the taxable part in allowances. ठीक है, for allowances you will do this, but remember that for DA, take only DA if in this case, it is not whole DA you have to take. Okay? You have to take only DA if. As we know, in meaning of salary, mostly you take DA if. Okay? So, so, you have to take only DA if. And other for all other allowances, take only the taxable part. And these things we know already, when we salary ka statement, banate hai, when we uh, prepare statement for gross salary, right? So you have, these things are there on top, right? As taxable, bonus commission fee. Just take it as it is. Okay. This much is fine, clear, right? Ye simple hai. Iske baad mein jo hai, thikhe? to take any other monetary payment. Okay. Apart from this, see in this all monetary payment will get covered. Okay. All monetary payment will get covered. But if something is left out, that monetary payment also you can take. Okay? Only condition is that it should not be a perquisite. So if it's a perquisite, it comes under the definition of perquisite. Okay, whether it is monetary or non-monetary, you will not take. So don't take perquisites. Okay? Perquisites nahi lena hai. monetary or non-monetary. Okay. Or ye last retirement benefits. Correct? Your gratuity. Or upka commuted pension, leave salary, all that jo retirement mein milta hai, jo lump sum mein milta hai, right? Ye wo sab hai. Thik hai? Ye sab nahi lena hai. Bas. Thik hai? Commutation of pension, all these things. Ye sab lump sum retirement benefits. Thik hai? So bas it, itna hi hai, agar short mein agar hum bol, bolu mein aapko fir se, okay? How to get this salary? Basic and DA, just start with your HRA salary. First two things are same. Then just take these three taxable allowances, which are always fully taxable. Done. Then take allowances. DA is also one allowance, but take all other allowances, only taxable amount to take that. Okay. And if any monetary payment is there, which is not a perquisite, you take that. Everything will be covered. If you take only the red lines, Automatically, other things will get excluded. Just for checking, you can see this that you have checked once that you have excluded all perquisites, right? And no lump sum retirement benefit should come. That's it. Okay. Right? Then uh, Okay, salary on due basis, right? It's always on due basis. Salary from two or more employers, take aggregate salary. Okay, for this, for this purpose, okay, for your accommodation purpose, salary, if there are, is working for more than one employer, take aggregate salary. Okay, monetary payments, which are not perquisite, shall be taken. Okay, this we have already seen. 
Now, next one part is leave encashment during continuation of service. See, leave encashment is a retirement benefit. But if you are taking it in, during continuation of service, it is not a retirement benefit. So you will take it. Okay. If received at the time of retirement, then you won't take it. There is one point in red. Just remember that your salary does not include employer's contribution to P. This one thing is excluded. Okay, apart from whatever is given here, just exclude this also. Employer's contribution to PA. Okay. So this is uh, employer is where the employee is serving on deputation for deputation point. Okay. Now we are coming to the last point, which is the last res residual category. I said more than 98% employees will fall in this. So now this table you need not do anything about it. It is exactly the same. Just one small change. One minute. Right. So here you can see population of city to 10 lakhs up to 25 lakhs more than 25 lakhs same okay 10.5 percent 10 percent 15 percent now here it is accommodation owned by employer okay accommodation owned by employer but it is possible that the employer himself has hired that accommodation okay so that will be called as accommodation not owned by employer so is me kya karenge na Isme up fifteen percent highest limit away consider karna. It will be lower of rent paid payable by employer because employer has hired, right? Usko paise lagi hai, jitte paise usko lagi hai, wo apko lenge pehli baar. Okay, take whatever rent the employer has paid, actual. So rent paid payable by employer or 15% of salary, whichever is lower. Okay, this is the only thing you have to add here. This gets added, that's it. Small thing. Okay, and that to this 15% is same as this. Okay, so this becomes your residual category. One minute. Okay. Now again, salary is the same which we saw. Above. Meaning of salary is the same. Okay. Okay. And whatever this year it has been written, these points are also same. Okay. So now this is the one thing. And now next thing, what you have to uh, remember is exemption of ninety days in case of allotment of two houses. Okay. So here, what will happen is. See, if I am transferred, okay, I was staying here in a city, okay, now I am transferred, I am transferred and I have taken a house in another city, okay, what in another city, now see, my children will be studying and all that, I'll have to get the TC and all that, there are certain things to be done, right? My family will still be here. So they cannot come here immediately. So it will not be possible for me to surrender this house immediately, correct? Right? Logically speaking. So which is why government gives a 90 day period. For 90 days, okay? For 90 days from the date when you have, you have occupied this other accommodation. Okay? From the date you have uh, occupied the other accommodation, 90 days from here, you can use both the accommodations. Okay? But after 90 days, so 90 days, uh, practically it is taken as three months. Okay? Whenever you do the calculation in months, you can take it straight away as three months. Okay. So, so after three months, if you continue for the fourth month, then your perquisite will be charged for this also and this also, both houses. 
ठीक है समझ में आ गया कि ये आपका जैसे यहां से आप ट्रांसफर हो रहे हो ठीक है जो रेड वाला जो मैंने बनाया है यहाँ पे आ, ये दूसरे शहर में आप ट्रांसफर हुए तब आप इस पुराने घर को इमीडिएटली सरेंडर नहीं कर सकते आपके बच्चे पढ़ रहे होंगे कुछ प्रॉब्लम हो सकता है करेक्ट यू विल नीड सम टाइम तो इसीलिए गवर्नमेंट आपको तीन महीने का वक्त देती है कि इसको ऑक्यूपाई करने के बाद आपको तीन महीने तक परक्विजिट वैल्यू जो है दोनों में से जो लोअर अमाउंट है दोनों को कंप्यूट किया जाएगा यू कंप्यूट बोथ एंड वट एवर इज द लोअर दैट विल बी योर परक्विजिट वैल्यू फॉर थ्री मंथस After three months, you have to pay tax for both. ठीक है? Okay, so that is uh, the first B point, and then this is again that uh, offshore areas, mining site, onshore exploration site, all these things, okay, which are offshore areas. In this year, if you have gotten. Uh, If you are getting accommodation, we are, you had seen this in the list of exempted perquisites, correct? So here the rule for exemption exactly is, okay. If accommodation is of temporary nature with plinth area up to eight hundred square feet, plinth area means like we say, we say carpet area, we say, 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 So something like that, plinth area. Plinth area is what they use. Okay. So if of uh, if accommodation should be of temporary nature, that is, he will be using it for certain period. It won't be his permanent accommodation. Okay. Temporary nature with plinth area up to eight hundred square feet, and is located not less than eight kilometers away from the local limits of municipality or uh, cantonment borough. ठीक है, not less than eight kilometers अभी मतलब from the local limit of municipality ये आठ किलोमीटर boundary जो है municipality की जो boundary आ जाती है boundary से आठ किलोमीटर से और दूर होना चाहिए accommodation तब free है, okay so this means that say your municipality okay this is the this is your boundary of your municipality okay बाउंड so from here from here say this is 8 kilometers okay so that accommodation should be 8 kilometers or more from from here just they are making sure it's a remote accommodation that's why they are not charging anything right theek hai right So, ये ये वन है ठीक है और यहाँ पे एंड में आप देख रहे हैं इट इज और इट इज पॉइंट बी ओके पॉइंट बी इज इट इज लोकेटेड इन रिमोट एरिया एंड डिफाइंड रिमोट एरिया ओके विच इज एटलीस्ट फोर्टी किलोमीटर्स अवे फ्रॉम अ टाउन हैविंग पॉपुलेशन अप टू टू थाउजेंड एज पर लेटेस्ट पब्लिश सेंसेस ठीक है एक स्पेसिफिक पॉइंट है तो so, so, अगर ये पॉइंट आपका ये हो जाता है अगर दिस पॉइंट इज इज अडियरिंग टू दिस पॉइंट देन ही डजेंट नीड टू गो टू पॉइंट बी ठीक है इफ ही डजेंट अडियर टू इट देन देन ही कैन लुक एट पॉइंट बी ठीक है रिमोट एरिया रिमोट एरिया का जस्ट डिफाइन किया है यहाँ पे फोर्टी किलोमीटर्स अवे फ्रॉम अ टाउन हैविंग पॉपुलेशन अप टू ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड एज पर लेटेस्ट पब्लिश्ड सेंसेस ठीक है सेंसस हम कौन सा यूज कर रहे हैं 2001, ओके अभी विल डू वन प्रॉब्लम ऑन दिस ठीक है प्रॉब्लम करेंगे तो आपको थोड़ा विल फील बेटर Okay, so Mr. Chauhan has the following salary structure. Okay, so basic salary, entertainment allowance. If nowhere they have mentioned anything, whether is a government employee or not, always consider the person as a non-government employee. Okay, 
government being a government employee is a specific thing it has to be mentioned in the problem okay otherwise non government employee mr chauhan has a following salary structure basic salary entertainment allowance okay so both will be fully taxable education allowance 500 per month he has three children for two children he will get 100 100 okay that means 300 of this will be taxable every month correct right and then ds fully taxable fees bonuses fully taxable always professional tax paid by employer this is a perquisite okay professional tax of employee paid by employer is a perquisite 2000 okay been provided with a rent free accommodation in mumbai theek okay? hai so mumbai naam aa gaya yahan humko pata chal gaya we have to use 15% mumbai's name has come so you know that you have to use 15% okay right population will be about 25 lakhs 60% of da forms part of retirement benefits theek okay? hai this is in relation to da compute taxable value of accommodation ठीक है नाउ वी हैव टू कंप्यूट टैक्सेबल वैल्यू ऑफ अकोमोडेशन गिवन इज एम्प्लॉयर ओन सच अकोमोडेशन ठीक है तो अच्छा पहली बात इसमें कुछ लिखा है क्या गवर्नमेंट एम्प्लॉय है डेप्यूटेशन में कुछ नहीं तो ये सब अदर्स में आ गया ओके दिस कम इन अदर्स वी विल यूज द थर्ड टेबल फॉर दिस ओके फॉर थर्ड टेबल देयर वर टू पार्ट्स राइट वन वाज ओन्ड बाय एम्प्लॉयर एंड सेकंड ही हायर्ड बाय एम्प्लॉयर ठीक है सो आई शो इट टू यू वंस मोर एक बार मैं दिखा दूंगा आपको सी दिस वन अदर एम्प्लॉज करेक्ट दिस इज द टेबल वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट ठीक है दिस टेबल विल बी एप्लीकेबल हियर एंड दिस इज ओन्ड बाय एम्प्लॉयर सो व्हाट विल अप्लाई फिफ्टीन परसेंट ऑफ सैलरी बिकॉज इट इज मुंबई ओके and when it is not owned by employee you will what you will do this is 15% as it is okay whichever be the city this is 15% only fixed and this is rent paid payable by employer lower of these two we have to take okay so this we will do at the end first we have to calculate what is salary okay and once we get salary and then very easily we will put it in this table and compute it theek okay? hai ओके सो यार हमको यहाँ पे ग्रॉस सैलरी सैलरी नहीं निकालना है हमको डोंट हैव टू फाइंड सैलरी वी ओनली हैव टू फाइंड टैक्सेबल वैल्यू ऑफ अकोमोडेशन ओके ठीक है तो हमको टैक्स सैलरी के लिए हमको क्या क्या हम यूज करेंगे लेट अस सी ठीक है तो यहाँ पे मैं एक बार फिर आपको ये बता दू ठीक है तो दिस इज द मीनिंग ऑफ सैलरी जस्ट गो थ्रू इट अगेन फर्स्ट व्हाट वी विल टेक बेसिक डी ए इफ ओके देन बोनस कमीशन फीस यू विल टेक फुल्ली एंड फॉर ऑल अदर अलाउंसेस टेक ओनली द टैक्सेबल पार्ट डन ओके एंड इफ अपार्ट फ्रॉम दिस देयर इज एनी अदर मोनेटरी अमाउंट ओके इफ इट इज नॉट अ परक्विजिट वी विल टेक इट ओके इफ इट इज नॉट अ परक्विजिट एंड नॉट रिटायरमेंट बेनिफिट्स देन वी विल टेक okay so just so here perquisites are not taken whether monetary or non monetary so yahan pe so we are when now if we go down okay kya kya hum lenge let's see so we'll take basic salary we'll take entertainment allowance okay fees bonus will take and da will take 60% which is forming part okay how much will be 60% 10% is 300 1800 1800 per month we will take da okay theek hai 
अब ये जो है आपका प्रोफेशनल टैक्स पेड बाय एम्प्लॉय पे ऑफ एम्प्लॉय पेड बाय एम्प्लॉयर दिस इज अर्कुजिट सो यू टू एक्सक्लूड इट ठीक है जो रेड में किया है वो लेना नहीं राइट right? बस इतने ही चीजें ये सब चीज हम ऐड कर देंगे एंड यू विल गेट योर सैलरी ठीक है वंस वी गेट सैलरी फॉर दिस वन वॉट विल डू फॉर फर्स्ट पॉइंट वी विल जस्ट टेक फिफ्टीन परसेंट और सेकेंड पॉइंट वॉट विल टेक मंथली रेंट इज गिवन एज नाइन हंड्रेड सो ट्वेल्व नाइन जा हंड्रेड एंड एट सो टेन थाउजेंड एट हंड्रेड एनुअली ठीक है टेन थाउजेंड एट हंड्रेड और फिफ्टीन परसेंट ऑफ सैलरी विच एवर इज लोअर दैट वी विल टेक फॉर सेकेंड डन बस यही करना है इसके सोल्यूशन में हमको ठीक है ये जो फर्स्ट टेबल है दिस ये हम आखिरी में डालेंगे ठीक है बिकॉज वी डोंट नो दिस पार्ट ना ओके सो दिस वी नो ठीक है दिस फिफ्टीन परसेंट ऑफ सैलरी एंड दिस विल बी फिफ्टीन परसेंट ऑफ सैलरी और रेंट पेड विच एवर इज लोअर ठीक है अब ये नहीं मालूम हम तो एज ऑफ नाउ वी डोंट नो दिस ठीक है ये तो हम निकालेंगे अब नीचे राइट right? तो चलो डाल देते हैं सब बेसिक सैलरी बोनस फीस स्टेट अवे जस्ट फुट द अमाउंट राइट एंड इन अलाउंसेस सेक्शन डी ए सिक्सटी परसेंट ऑफ दिस ठीक है इट कम्स टू ट्वेंटी वन सिक्स हंड्रेड एंटरटेनमेंट अलाउंस टेक फुल्ली एजुकेशन अलाउंस जो है थ्री हंड्रेड के हिसाब से आप लेंगे ओके फाइव हंड्रेड इज द एजुकेशन अलाउंस टू हंड्रेड विल बी एक्सम तो थ्री हंड्रेड पर मंथ विल बी टैक्सेबल विच इज थ्री थाउजेंड सिक्स हंड्रेड ओके एट दिस थ्री अलाउंसेस दिस विल गेट दिस मच ठीक है दैट परक्विजिट विल नॉट टेक प्रोफेशनल टैक्स ठीक है तो आप इसको एड कीजिए You add all this, and you will get this one thousand two hundred. Now we have got the salary. Up kya hai? Just apko yaha pe is salary ka fifteen percent kar dijiye. That's up straight away. Okay. So what is how much is fifteen percent? One twelve two hundred into fifteen percent. सिक्सटीन एट थर्टी ये हो गया हमारा पहला सिक्सटीन एट थर्टी एंड वॉट अबाउट सेकेंड सेकेंड अगेन फिफ्टीन परसेंट ऑफ सैलरी यू नीड एंड रेंट पेड नाइन हंड्रेड था रेंट राइट तो वन जीरो एट जीरो जीरो नाइन हंड्रेड इंटू ट्वेल्व ओके वॉट इज द लोअर ऑफ द टू टेन थाउजेंड एट हंड्रेड दैट्स वाई सेकेंड वन ठीक है प्रोफेशनल टैक्स इज नॉट ओके अब यहाँ पे इलेस्ट्रेशन सिक्सटीन में इन इलेस्ट्रेशन सिक्सटीन वॉट देव आस्ट इज सेट टेक द सेम इलेस्ट्रेशन फिफ्टीन बट जस्ट कंसिडर पॉपुलेशन इज फोर्टीन लैख सिक्सटी थाउजेंड देन वॉट विल बी द आंसर ठीक है इफ इट इज फोर्टीन लैख सिक्सटी थाउजेंड दैट मीन्स इट विल कम इन द मिडिल वन मिडिल टेबल Correct. Up to ten lakhs, then is up to twenty five lakhs, then more than twenty five lakhs. So it will come in up to twenty five lakhs. Correct. And the percent is ten percent for that. So what we will do? Nothing. You have to change. Just change this to ten percent. ये जो है. This will change this percent to ten. Salary, everything will remain same. Ten percent. So this will become. Eleven two hundred, and in second case, it will be lower of these two. It is still ten eight hundred. Okay, eleven two twenty, ten eight hundred. ठीक है, right? तो अब हमने city change कर दिया. So salary computation remains the same. We only change the city. Okay. So now next problem is Miss Tuti has the following salary structure. Okay, basic salary fifteen thousand, DA five thousand per month, 
not forming not forming part okay you calculate is not forming part of retirement benefits postal allowance 1000 per month but does not have any child theek hai to isme se kitna exemption milega postal allowance is 1000 per month percent does not have any child okay so he will not get any exemption ठीक है अगर एक बच्चा हो तो 300 हंड्रेड विल बी द एग्जेपन वन चाइल्ड इज देर देन थ्री हंड्रेड विल बी द एग्जेपन टू चिल्ड्रेन आर देर देन यू कैन गेट अप टू सिक्स हंड्रेड ओके नो चिल्ड्रेन यू विल गेट नो एग्जेपन सो दिस इज फुल बिकम्स फुल्ली टैक्सीबल ओके राइट एंड देन टिफ इन अलाउंस इज अ फुल्ली टैक्सीबल अलाउंस okay transport allowance just now we talked about transport allowance correct so for normal people it is fully taxable bonus is always fully taxable commission is always fully taxable free re refreshment in office is a perquisite theek okay? hai it's a perquisite and it's a tax free perquisite theek okay? hai isliye isko main delete kar diya it will not come in the statement at all mobile phone we have said mobile phone facility is free delete computer facility again that is computer which is using that is the meaning of facility okay so that's why computer facility is also not taxable clear clear right why we deleted these three free refreshment is uh it's free Uh, it's not a perquisite. Mobile phone facility is not a perquisite. Computer facility is not a perquisite. Okay. So now we have to work with only these things. She has been provided a rent-free accommodation owned by employer in Kolkata. Kolkata का नाम आ गया. Kolkata means fifteen percent. I said, right? And it's owned by employer, fifteen percent. Okay. And हाउस वॉज अलॉटेड टू हर विद इफेक्ट फ्रॉम वन फाइव ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन ठीक है इट वॉज अलॉटेड फ्रॉम वन फाइव ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन फ्रॉम मे ठीक है नॉट इट वॉज नॉट देर इन अप्रिल बट शी कूड ऑक्यूपाई ओनली फ्रॉम वन सिक्स ओके एंड वॉट वी हैव टू फाइंड हियर जस्ट सी वी हैव टू फाइंड द ग्रॉस टेक्सेबल सैलरी ओके टू फाइंड फॉर ग्रॉस टेक्सेबल सैलरी वी हैव टू फाइंड रेंट फ्री अकोमोडेशन वैल्यू ऑल्सो ठीक है बट बेसिकली टू फाइंड ग्रॉस टेक्सेबल सैलरी ठीक है पिछले प्रॉब्लम में लास्ट प्रॉब्लम वी टू फाइंड ओनली रेंट फ्री अकोमोडेशन बट यू यू टू फाइंड ग्रॉस सैलरी अच्छा यर वी सेड इन परक्विजिट देर वर थ्री कंडीशन करेक्ट ओनली देन परक्विजिट इज चार्जेबल टू टैक्स करेक्ट वेन इट रिजल्ट इन पर्सनल एडवांटेज टू द एम्प्लॉय दैट वॉज द इम्पॉर्टेंट पॉइंट दर ठीक है तो शी स्टार्टेड शी ऑक्यूपाइड ओनली फ्रॉम वन सिक्स so that's why you will consider perquisite only from one six from when she used it theek okay? hai in perquisites when you are not using it uh, it will not be taxable okay right so just aap socho employer ne koi dur ka kahin aapko allot kar diya employer has given you some okay i am i am giving this to you you can use it if you want but you don't have time you never go there you never went there right so should you be charged uh, for that tax no correct so isile <clears throat> perquisite mein the person must have used it yaad rakhna it must result in personal advantage okay so that's why here aapka 4 and 5 4 is april correct 1 4 and 1 5 for these two months she will not be liable to tax for rent free accommodation so two months you take out that means for 10 months only she will be liable to tax correct for 10 months only she will be liable to tax so that means salary also you will consider for 10 months okay so chali let's go ahead solving this first of all we'll take all the fully taxable ones so basic salary da okay postal allowance also fully taxable here This is also fully taxable. Tiffin allowance, 
transport is fully taxable bonus and commission are fully taxable all of these we will put okay just check these all ones okay computation of gross salary of so and so percent for ay 22 23 all these things to write it like that okay so in your online examination the importance of this reduces quite a bit right so chalo so basic salary bonus and commission yeah these things you have to write on top if fees is there fees also you write on top like this then you can club all allowances together theek okay? hai sare allowances ko will club together right so da full postal allowance full tiffin and transport allowance full theek okay? hai we have taken full amount annual amount add it and put it here also theek okay? hai then after that last thing is perquisite so perquisite mein those three things we said were not taxable theek okay? hai so teeno ka dal denge and all three will be nil okay so here we have put everything except rent free accommodation so let us compute rent free accommodation now so apne ko yahi pe theek hai here itself will know what all we can take in salary theek hai so we will take basic salary bonus commission and all taxable allowances now these are fully taxable allowances see what uh, so shall i take this whole thing right all are taxable allowances right we'll we'll add this ye dono ye ye hum add karenge to aapko pura salary mil jayega jo aapke rent free accommodation ke liye theek hai bas ek hi yahan pe problem hai wo hai aapke da mein da mein aapko sirf da if lena hai you have to take only da if so you cannot take this 60000 But the whole D, it's D N not forming part of salary was given in the problem. So you will only take. So you will only take these three. Okay, for computation of salary. So I am showing in blue what all will be taking. Okay, we will take this and this, whatever is in blue. Okay, we will add all all this and we will get what salary. Once we get salary. यहाँ पे तो हायर वाला क्वेश्चन है ही नहीं इट्स नॉट नथिंग अबाउट हायर इट वाज हिज ओन हाउस ठीक है ओनली थिंग इज वी हैव टू टेक दैट सैलरी फॉर एट मंथ्स सॉरी टेन मंथ्स टेन ठीक है यहाँ पे आप देख लोगे दिस इज योर कंप्यूटेशन ऑफ सैलरी वट एवर आई शोन यू अब द सेम थिंग्स ओके बेसिक सैलरी बोनस कमीशन अलाउंसेस सी DA is nil, okay. And then the other three taxable allowances take fully, okay. Okay, add all, and you will get this as total. Okay. So now value of rent-free accommodation will be fifteen percent of two thirty-five four hundred, and you multiply by ten by twelve, okay. So you will consider only ten. She uh, she used it only for ten months. So multiply by ten by twelve. Clear? So this so you get twenty nine four two five. This is the answer. Is there any doubt? Any doubt in this? No sir. Okay. Let's go through the problems one once. It will be very even more clear. Go go through the video once, ठीक है? और आप खुद खुद ये problem question देख के खुद solve कीजिए. अलग जो है, you should take a notebook and then solve it yourself. Then you will get the confidence automatically. Okay. So this is done. Now this one more problem we'll do. I'll give you a little break before we do that. Okay. Or you want me to continue?
five minutes break okay just relax a bit and come back so come back at 9 56 five minutes break
Okay, so we'll continue. So next problem says, Miss Kushi has the following salary details. Basic salary. DA. Okay. So nothing has been mentioned with DA. So full thing forms part of salary that is. Okay. Basic salary DA. Academic development allowance. Okay. This is among those six allowance, 10, 14, 1. Okay. Among those six allowance, it's basically uh, professional development allowance and academic development all are the same thing. Academic allowance. Okay. So this is exempt up to the expenditure. So expenditure is 700. This is 1000. So taxable part is how much here? 300 will be the taxable part. Okay. Entertainment allowance, 500. Okay, so let's go ahead. Entertainment allowance, 500. Okay. Answer is we have to find her gross taxable salary. Okay. So then here, she has been provided with a rent free accommodation. Been provided with the rent free accommodation in Purulia. Okay. On 1 7 2021, she was posted to Kolkata. So that means from 1 4 to 1 6, she is in Purulia. Okay. And on, on 1 7, she was posted to Kolkata. Four, five, six, three months she was in Purulia. Okay, and then in Kolkata, a new house further allotted to her on the same date. On once, okay. on one seven, a new house was allotted to her on the same date. That is on one seven, she got a new house, right? But she surrendered Purulia house only on 31 12. Okay. So Purulia house, uh, so she was posted to Kolkata on 1, 7, 1, uh, that is July. So July, August, September. For three days, it is exempt, right? Now for 90 days, she can use both houses, right? So July, August, September. Till September, it's okay. But for October, November, December, she will have to pay rent for both houses. Clear? Okay. Rent paid for by employer for Purulia house. Okay. So it is not, it is. Uh, uh, Purulia house is uh, basically uh, rented by employer, hired by employer. So it is 500 per month is the rent. And Kolkata house is owned by the employer. Okay. So Kolkata, we know it's straight away 15%. Okay. For Purulia house, uh, let's see if we have been given the population. Okay. If we have not been given population, then we can take uh, 500 per month. Okay. Otherwise, once if you are given population, then what we will do? Say, for example, 10%, uh, it, it comes to 10% of salary, then you will see lower of the 10% and 500. Okay. So, okay, let's go ahead and we'll try to solve this. The first thing is computation of gross taxable salary. We'll go ahead with this. In this basic and DA will take fully. Okay. And academic allowance 300. Okay. So 12 threes are 36. 3600 is taxable for this academic. Okay. Okay. Expenditure incurred is 700. Entertainment allowance fully taxable. Right. That's all. Apart from this, this there is nothing. Only last thing will be your rent free accommodation. Okay.
put your basic salary. There is no fees, commission, and all that. Come to allowance. Dearness allowance take fully. Academic allowance less exempted. Okay, it becomes comes to three hundred. We had seen so three hundred means twelve threes are thirty six. Three thousand six hundred. Just put the total allowance, and here just put the exempted allowance. It is seven hundred per month. Okay, and you will get this outside. Entertainment allowance fully taxable. Right. Add these three allowances. You'll get this. Okay. Right. Now, last is rent-free accommodation. We'll work it out. Now, here, in this case, you have got for uh, salary for the purpose of rent-free accommodation. You will take this also. You will take all three. Okay. Because this is D A if. Okay. And these two are taxable allowances. So basically, you can just add these two, and you will get salary for rent-free accommodation. ठीक है, ओके, सो लेट मी जस्ट ऐड इट हियर इज़ इक्वल्स टू सेवेंटी टू थाउजेंड प्लस फोर्टी फाइव सिक्स हंड्रेड, बिकॉज़ वन सेवेंटीन सिक्स हंड्रेड, ओके, सो नाउ दिस जस्ट सेज़ दैट फॉर अ पीरियड ऑफ़ थ्री मंथ्स Uh, only the lower value will be taxable. Okay, lower of the two. So let's compute the value of rent-free accommodation. It has to be done date-wise now. So here now she was in Purulia. Okay, she is having Purulia house. Okay, here they have taken fifteen percent. Okay, considering Purulia's uh, Purulia population is more than twenty five thousand, this will be given to you in the problem. Okay, you cannot uh, judge it for any random place. If like even I, if I was there, Purulia, I would not have known whether the population is twenty five thousand or whatever. That will be given in notes to you. Okay. Population of this per this is this much, right? So now for Purulia house, now see this is one seventeen six hundred. We had calculated that annual salary about right one seventeen six hundred. So into three by twelve because this year this is only for three months. Just do into three by twelve into fifteen percent, and actual rent paid by the employer. Rent paid is five hundred, which is given. Five hundred into three, whichever is lower. So this is lower. Okay, right. So basically, you see. One seventeen six hundred, okay, and if you do into three by twelve, okay, you get twenty nine four hundred. Let's just see how much is fifteen percent, ten percent, and seven point five percent. Okay, just giving you another idea. Now, is equals to this into fifteen percent is four four one zero. Now four four one zero. So here one thousand five hundred is lower, correct? So what about the second case? Second case, just remove ten. You we'll get two nine four zero. So even if it is ten percent, it is one thousand five hundred only is lower. What about the last one? Let's check into seven point five percent two two zero five. So in any case, even if the population is uh, up to ten ten lakhs, okay, even then. Your one thousand five hundred is only more here. Okay, I'm just telling you. Why. Like, uh, okay, so but uh, you will. So okay, so this is how like we can find out that in any case it is going. You will have to take one thousand five hundred only. Okay, 
So now uh, for you, they will definitely give you the population figure. Okay. Apart from that, you will you cannot compute which one you have to use. So now this is how you got one thousand five hundred. Did you understand the first part? If anyone did not understand this, I can repeat it for them. Tell me if this is clear. Okay, so I'm hoping that this is clear for all of you. And now the next is one seven is when he was posted to Kolkata. So one seven to thirty nine. Here, what you have to do is, okay, this Puruli house, Kolkata was not applicable here. This Kolkata house, okay, he was not there in Kolkata then. Now he has both the house, so. The lower value will be exempted. So here, first one is again same as above Puruli house, one thousand five hundred, which we computed here, it is the same. Okay. Now for Kolkata, what you will do is owned by employer. It is right. So it's directly fifteen percent of salary. Okay, which comes to four four one zero, which is the lower one thousand five hundred. So this will be taken. Now next, from one ten to Thirty-one twelve. She had both house. Okay, so both will be taxable now. Three month period is over. So salary. Uh, I mean, this is rent of Purulia houses. Taxable value is one thousand five hundred. Same. And Kolkata is this. So you have to add these two now. Okay. You have to add these two. Add these two, and you will get this. Okay, both will be taxable. After that, from one one to thirty one three, he only had the Kolkata house. Okay, only had the Kolkata house. So Puruli is not applicable, and this is four four one zero as already calculated. So this becomes four four one zero. Now you have to add all four, and you will get rent free accommodation. That's all four four one. Okay, total value is thirteen three twenty for the year. This you will have to put here, thirteen three twenty, for quiet value. Okay, computation of salary, and then add this. You will get gross salary. Okay. Okay. So here, this just some notes is. Three months you can always take as ninety days as three months, okay. Ninety days can always be taken as three months. After ninety days, both house shall be considered, okay. And salary for rent free accommodation is like we had already computed, one seventeen six hundred, correct? Right. So if D A not forming part of salary is there, then whole thing will come, okay. so that is it next part which we have to do is rent free furnished accommodation it's a very very small addition okay to your unfurnished accommodation a rent free furnished accommodation what will you call as rent free furnished accommodation accommodation plus furniture correct accommodation you well calculate as we have calculated above no change okay so value of furnished accommodation Value of accommodation plus value of furniture, accommodation as discussed above. Okay, no change. So for for furniture is just a small table here. Okay, this is how you have to calculate furniture. If furniture is owned by employer, ten percent of original cost of furniture. Just take that. Furniture owned, ten percent of original cost. If hired, just take actual hire charges. You don't have to take any lower. Lower of this and this and all that. Okay, take the higher charges of employer straight away. Whatever he has paid for furniture. Okay. So if owned ten percent of original cost, hired take higher charges straight away. In furniture, normal furniture will come. Apart from that, refrigerator, television, radio, air conditioner, household appliances, all these come under furniture. Okay. 
right? All these things come under furniture. Your laptop, computer, those do not come. But household items come. So, and this rule of computation, whenever you want to uh, get rent-free furnished accommodation after you have the unfurnished value, whether it is government, non-government, it is the same rule which is mentioned here. Same rule. Okay, for government and non as well as non-government. Okay, so I'll take you through another problem. This is a small one, small problem. Okay, so Ashitosh has been provided with a furnished accommodation in a city having population of 14 lakhs. Like here it is given, no? It will be given like that in your problem. Okay, so nobody can guess the population basically. She has been provided with a furnished accommodation in a city with population of 14 lakhs. 14 lakhs means straight away it comes to the mind that it is up to 25 lakhs. Okay, second one. So that is 10% will be applicable. Okay. 10%. Municipal value of the house owned by employer is 80,000. Whereas fair rent of the house is 1 lakh. Okay. So for rent free accommodation, what do uh, what do you take like 7.5 percent 10 percent and 15 percent of what it is of salary okay salary the way we calculate it right so do we use fair rent or municipal value for this no okay so these two are just given to confuse you there is no role of municipal value and fair rent you only have to calculate his salary for the purpose of accommodation and it will be 10 percent of that Basic salary. Okay, allowance for increased cost of living. So DA dearness allowance is the allowance which you get for increased cost of living. So this is nothing but DA. Okay. Children education allowance three thousand per month. As one son, two married daughters. So no problem if they are married, not married. So for two people. Uh, she will get exemption. 200 exemption she will get. 2,800 per month will be taxable. Okay. That's all. And then they have just given you furniture details. Okay. And calculate gross taxable salary. You have to calculate gross taxable salary. Okay. And then, so uh, furniture details and all we will use for calculating the furniture value. Okay. Before that, let's calculate unfurnished accommodation value. This is computation of gross salary. In that, what all we will take? Take full basic salary, take full dearness allowance. Right? So nothing is given about D DA, so it is forming part of salary. Okay. It is forming part of salary. So if it is forming part of salary, then whole thing will come. Right. So if it is not forming part of salary, whole thing will not come. Correct. DA if we have to take basically. The basic salary plus DA if is 60,000. Then children education allowance 2,800, that is uh, 3,000 here, and for uh, 200 per month will be exempted. So this minus this, you will get this. Next is what? Rent-free furnished accommodation. We, we have not yet calculated this, correct? So this part we will see later. Right, now here you can just say straight away what is salary for accommodation, okay? So basic DAF and this, this is the taxable part. So just add these three, you will get. Okay. So add these three, three lakh plus 60,000 
प्लस थर्टी थ्री सिक्स हंड्रेड ओके दिस दिस इज योर सैलरी फॉर दैट पर्पस एंड वी नो दैट टेन परसेंट वी विल टेक करेक्ट टेन परसेंट हेज टू बी टेकन जस्ट रिमूव वन जीरो बिकम्स थर्टी नाइन थ्री सिक्सटी दैट्स वाई here you have 39360 okay so this becomes your value of unfurnished accommodation 39360 next we have to calculate for furniture the furniture straight away if it's higher take higher value if it is owned take 10% okay so here if you see these two has been hired have been hired okay so hired means you don't have to do anything take it as it is okay if owned this is owned original cost has been given just take 10% of this and add it add everything that's all 10% will this be 1500 2000 okay 3500 this is going to be 3500 this one okay and add uh add here this is per month Three thousand five hundred plus. So this will be twelve thousand twenty-four. Okay, three thousand five hundred plus twenty-four thousand twenty-seven five hundred twenty-seven five hundred, and this will be twelve thousand thirty-nine five hundred. Okay, okay. Now this is ten thousand. Oh, sorry, sorry. I took it. This this is ten thousand twenty thousand. Okay. So what we'll take is just ten percent. I just took. Okay. So this uh, what you will take for hired basically. This is two thousand, and this is twelve. Okay, okay. I think I made a mistake in this part. This all I've taken properly. This hired is one minute. Okay, okay. See, see. This is two thousand per annum. P A. This is per annum, so you don't have to do anything here. Okay. Take two thousand directly. This will be twelve thousand. Okay. So twelve thousand plus two thousand. Fourteen thousand. Fourteen thousand plus ten percent of these. This was three thousand five hundred. So seventeen thousand five hundred. Okay, that's how you got seventeen thousand five hundred. Oh, this higher take straight away. There's nothing much to think about here. Okay, for higher take the amount straight away. That's all. And for own own to take ten percent. That's it. And this seventeen thousand five hundred, you'll have to put here in value of furniture. Okay, let's put it here. Add accommodation and furniture, and put the value here. That's it. Let's add this whole thing. And this will be your gross taxable salary. Clear? Let me know any other problems if you want me to repeat. We can repeat on. friday okay on friday i can repeat if you have any doubt doubt in any problem okay so next is see i mean uh, this part i'm just completing because it's all related okay it's nothing in it next one is provided at concessional rent if accommodation is concessional rent then what you have to do compute the value as you have done above okay so value of rent free accommodation just compute as usual okay and then whatever rent you are paying for it just take that okay that will be your taxable value for example value of rent free accommodation is say 20000 but you are paying only 5000 so then perquisite will become 15000 that's all 
So if concessional rent means nothing, all same thing will be there. Problem will be same as above. So find the value of your unfurnished and find the value of your furniture, add it, and you will get this 20,000. Okay. That's what is the value of rent free accommodation. Then they will just give you that employee is paying this much value. Just deduct it from it. And you will get taxable value of perquisite. This also is applicable for government employees as well. Okay, the furnishing part, whatever we have calculated in furnishing and concessional rent, it's applicable to everyone, to government also. Okay, next is in a hotel. This is, I think, the last thing and the accommodation part will be over and we can close the class here. Okay, so uh, accommodation provided in a hotel. So if the accommodation is being provided in a hotel, now this is not, you, we know that we know that nothing is taxable for hotel up to aggregate of 15 days, correct? Accommodation up to aggregate 15 days, nothing is taxable. We saw in tax-free perquisites, okay? Provided on transfer of employee from one place to another. Okay, this we already know. So this is like if he has been providing provided accommodation in a hotel only, is continuing in a hotel, then the value has to be calculated as that. This will be 24% of salary for the period of accommodation. Okay, it's higher than 15% also. So because you will give accommodation in a hotel to high level employees only, which is why requisite value is 24% of salary or actual charges paid or payable to such hotel, whatever rent employer is pay, paying to the hotel. Okay, this is for hotel accommodation. Up to 15 days is exempt, right? And if out of this, in this, say you have got the value as, say, I'm getting the value as 50,000. Okay. So I'm getting the value as 50,000. Okay. And so this I've computed through this and I've got 50,000. And if the employee is pay, paying 20,000, that you have to deduct again, right? And you will get final value of perquisite as this. Okay, that's what we are saying here. Rent is paid, paid then taxable value is value of perquisite minus rent paid. Fine. Salary meaning same as rent free accommodation. Okay, same thing, no change. Same rule for government, non-government employee. If provided for more than 15 days, okay, then exempt for first 15 days. And after that, it is taxable like this, okay? Hotel includes licensed accommodation in the nature of motel, service, apartment, or guest house. Okay. This we all know, right? So I think here we can complete today's class. We'll continue from Insurance premium payable by employer. This is where we have to continue going forward. Insurance premium payable by employer. Okay. Perquisite in respect of insurance premium payable by employer. So this is where we will continue from next class. You have any questions now? You can also ask in your next session. Go through the problems, the video. Anything you don't understand, you can ask me next time also. Okay, so thank you. Thank you, sir.